Yankees, who have now won five in a row, and what a road team, winning 22 out of 28 on the road this year, against the Detroit Tigers. The Tigers coming fresh from winning three out of four from Boston over the weekend, and now only two games out of second place. ABC's Monday Night Baseball is brought to you by Texaco, doing the whole job, finding and producing oil and converting it to the products you need. By Chevrolet, like baseball, hot dogs, and apple pie. Chevrolet is an American favorite. Drive a Chevy in Belize. And by Light Beer, everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. and welcome to another great night of Monday Night Baseball. With Warner Wolf and Bob Euchre, this is Bob Prince here in Detroit, where close to 40,000 fans are on hand right here at Tiger Stadium to see if the young and ambitious Detroit team can flag down this Yankee Express. It's been a long time since New York has charged to the front, and they broke on top April 23rd and so far have beaten back all challengers. Tonight, Detroit, fresh from a three out of four popping of the Red Sox, as Warner told you, stand before the Yankees and say, hey, let's get on with it. Hi, I'm Warner Wolf along with Bob Prince inside the Detroit Tiger locker room. And man, do we have a ball game for you tonight. But before we get on with it, as Bob Prince said, let's uh, reevaluate and perhaps sum up what has happened with Charlie Finley in the situation. As you know, he averted a strike by playing Rudy and Fingers yesterday. There is still a lawsuit pending. And last week, Bob Prince, you said that perhaps Commissioner Bowie Kuhn uh, is baiting a trap. What did you mean by that? Well, specifically, Warner, what I meant was that I felt that he stood on very firm ground. You recall that he acted in what he felt was the best interest of Major League Baseball by negating that deal. Now, I don't think he was involved at all in the legal aspects of it because he felt that baseball should not see three premier ball players go to one or two ball clubs on the basis that if this keeps up, what's going to happen is the wealthy club will end up with all the better players. So I think he's on very firm ground, and he baited the trap in this fashion because what's going to happen, I think, legally will be that, of course, Charlie Finley will be upheld. Then the commissioner can say, well, I did all I could do, and here you are, Mr. Marvin Miller, here you are, Mr. Baseball Player, you put yourself in a position now that you can't get out of, and all the good players are going to end up with the wealthy ball club, and the rest of you can go back to doing whatever it is you do best, second best. Speaking of Charlie Finley, uh, pitching tonight for the New York Yankees, Kenny Holtzman. And, Bob, you saw uh, Holtzman come up with the Cubs in 66, and, of course, he later pitched for the A's and Charlie Finley. Well, you know, I don't understand one thing about Kenny Holtzman. He seems to be an unhappy young man. Why? I don't know. He's a fine pitcher. He's not a great pitcher, in my opinion. Over in the National League, he uh, won 74, lost 69, so he was up five. In the American League, he's up 22. He's 82 and 60. Does this mean that the National League is a tougher league? I don't know. But the Cubs were in a great ball club. Right? Well, uh, that's right. But uh, Walter Johnson won a lot of 20 games, and he played on one of the worst clubs you ever looked at. I think you'll find that in the long run, that Holtzman is a fine player. One of the good things about Kenny is you can give him the ball, and he's going to go out and pitch without missing a turn. So you can sort of your staff around him. Number two, he's going to keep in the ball game pretty much to the degree that even if he is behind Warner, you have a chance to catch up. But why he's so unhappy and doesn't want to sign a contract, I don't know. If he were a great pitcher, I could understand it. He's not really great, but then again, he isn't all that bad. And he speaks highly of you, Bob. Well, I have nothing against him. <laughs> okay. Looking at the record, you know, and the record says that he owes him a few. All right. On the other side of the fence, pitching for the Tigers, a gentleman I think we would have to refer to as a character. His name is Mark Fidrich. He's 21 years old. He's from Worcester, Massachusetts. He was not on the Tiger roster when the season began. They brought him up, and now Fidrich has a record of 7-1. and one. His only loss, 2 to nothing to the Red Sox. He has also completed seven games. But the interesting part, and people are coming tonight, perhaps nearly 40,000, to see Fidrich. Why? Because he does such things as pass the mound between innings. He will talk to the ball. He will show a pass to the ball. He will congratulate his fielders on the field after a great play. So Mark Fidrich is the man people have come to see tonight, and can he beat the Yankees? 
And speaking of the Yankees, they have loaded a lineup with seven or perhaps eight left-handed hitters. And Bob Uecker right now standing in the Yankee dugout. Tiger Stadium is a hitter's ballpark. Right you are, Warner Wolf, probably one of the better hitting ballparks in baseball. And, of course, tonight we're going to see the red-hot New York Yankees. I've just seen them in a four-game series in New York, probably one of the hottest hitting clubs in baseball. You know, when you're talking about hitting, you're talking about one of my favorite subjects. 200 lifetime batting average, tied me with another sports grade, averaging 200 or better for a 10-year period. I was bowler Don Carter. But, you know, a lot of people looking in tonight, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, sure, you can talk the way you do because it was always easy for you. This is not true. I've had my problems, uh, all incidents that happened during the ball game with me hitting. Coming up in the ninth inning of a ball game, bases loaded, two outs, down by a run. And to look in the visitor's dugout and see them sitting there with their speed clothes on. I've had incidents happen where I'd come home, maybe a 0 for June, 0 for July. And I'll never forget what my dad used to tell me. Why don't you get a job? But these are little things that never bothered me. Maybe to look down at the third base coach for a sign have him turn his back on you. Or maybe the catcher, instead of putting a sign down, just hollering out and telling the pitcher what to throw. But I think these are the things that really drove me on. You know, I can remember ordering bats. Sometimes they'd come back with a handle at each end. These are things that never discouraged me. I've had people ask me a lot of times, Bob, how long would a dozen bats last you? I would have to say, depending on what model, what weight of bat I was using, eight to 10 cookouts. But you know, when you're recognized as a hitting star the way I was, it gets aggravating a lot of times to maybe walk down the street. I've had it happen in New York City, walking down the street with my catcher's equipment on. And people ask me if I was a ball player, recognizing me right away. But these are things, as I said, that drove me on. A lot of awards for hitting. And I think any youngster can have these same awards if you're willing to make a few sacrifices and to pay a price. And some of the bigger awards I have cost me well over $100 each. What an outstanding ball game here tonight. The Yankees against the Tigers, and now back to you. All right, thank you, Bob. Tigers and Yankees, the Tigers take the field, and now it's estimated 50,000 fans will be here tonight to see 21-year-old Mark Fidget. Back with a Yankee lineup in just a moment. State trooper cars put on tough mileage, but sometimes your car puts on tough mileage too, just like a trooper. That's why you should use Texaco's Haviland Super Premium Motor Oil. Recently, more than 40 trooper cars using Texaco's Haviland were driven a total of over 2 million miles. Of the engines taken apart, none showed any sign of unusual wear. With Haviland's carefully balanced formulation, you get all this protection without buying any extra motor oil additives. Lush, tall, and strong, the trees of this great nation, oak, elm, and pine, all join in celebration. During this bicentennial year, McDonald's is giving each of the 50 states 1,776 trees to plant. Strong young trees for whole new generations to enjoy. for the visiting New York Yankees, leading off and in center field one of the hottest batters in baseball today, 27-year-old Mickey Rivers. Rivers hitting 330, is 18 for his last 36 times at bat, and is on a 20-game hitting streak. Rivers also has 24 stolen bases. Now the rest of the New York Yankees as they introduce themselves. Roy White, left field, Wayne, New Jersey. My name is Carlos Smith. I'm a designated hitter from Birmingham, Alabama. Chris Chambliss, first base, Oceanside, California. Greg Nettles, third base, San Diego, California. Uh, Oscar Gamble, right field from Montgomery, Alabama. Elrod Hendricks, catcher, St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. 
Willie Randolph, second baseman, Brooklyn, New York. Jim Mason, shortstop from Mobile, Alabama. Ken Holtzman, pitcher, Lincolnshire, Illinois. Billy Mark Nagy, born in Berkeley, California, died in New York. <laughs> All right, Bob Prince, what about these Tigers on defense tonight? <laughs> well, if I can get over that lap, I'll tell you, they're pretty tough ball club. They're young and they're rambunctious. We got. Mickey Stanley out there playing the left field, and he can move all over the spot, this young man. Ron LaFleur, who, of course, is well known for having uh, beaten the rap in prison and come out to play great baseball. Rusty Staub, who is a star with the Mets and a part of raconteur of cooking, is the right fielder. Then on top of that, we have Aurelio Rodriguez playing at third. He's a young guy who likes to charge the ball. He'll play up tight. Tom Brazier, the shortstop, can range and range well to his left and to his right. Pedro Garcia also has good movement to his right and his left. He's especially going back on short pops. Jason Thompson, another young man, a good left-hand thrower, as you can see, will be playing at first base for the Tigers tonight. And uh, behind the plate is Bruce Kim. And uh, Bruce is out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and uh, just came up from Evansville in Tucson last year. And on the mound is this young man by the name of Mark Fedrich, and I guess... The pictures can tell most everything, uh, Bobby Uecker, but there's a lot about him that we uh, maybe don't understand. I'll tell you, this is uh, one of the funniest guys probably that I've, I've seen uh, come along in baseball in a long time. He's got outstanding stuff, though, Bobby. He's won seven, lost one. I haven't seen a pitcher as young as Mark Pidrit be able to keep the ball down. He throws a sinking fastball, slider, not that good a curveball but he's an outstanding guy at, at hitting spots. And every once in a while, if he wants to come upstairs, pitch you tight, he can do it. And you're going to see a lot of antics from this young right-hander tonight. All right, Mickey Rivers standing in, batting at 330, four homers, 34 runs batted in. Ball one. Rivers had a 20-game batting streak, 36 for 88, batting at 409 in that streak. Bounced to first baseman, Thompson, one out. Fidrich, known as a character, they call him the Big Bird because they think he resembles the uh, fellow on Sesame Street. And uh, this is in honor of Big Bird Fidrich. This is Roy White, born in Los Angeles, batting at 287, the left fielder. Five homers, 31 runs batted in. Popped it straight up the shaft. It may be up in the seat. We'll have to wait and see how she's going to spin down. Woo, it battled for it. I'll tell you something. Kim had it in his glove, and Rodriguez knocked it out of his glove. Accidentally, of course. Mm -hmm. That's, that is what happened. Kim had it. One thing about a ball in the seats, it belongs to the fan. Ending out over the railing belongs to the ball player, and the umpire could call interference. But in the stands, it's anybody's baseball. Ball. Roy now lives in Wayne, New Jersey, although he was born in Los Angeles. Wow, I've heard a puppy. We're going to look at Mark Fidrich now. Each time he gets the ball back, when he gets set to bring it on, when he gets set to go to his delivery, you'll, you'll see him mumble a couple of words to the ball. And what, he's, what he is doing, he's telling the ball where he wants it to go. If he throws a slider, fastball, that sinking fastball, if he's trying to hit the outside, that's what he... You get a good <laughs> shot of him right there talking. And it's disturbing to the hitter because you can hear him, too. Did he ever cross up his catcher verbally? I don't <laughs> think so. I'll tell you that. This guy got a good shot of his. This could be a second fastball right here. And he just missed inside with it. How did you know that was going to be a second? Well, I'm looking in on Bruce Kim. Now I'm looking at Billy Martin. Well, what did you see Bruce Kim do? Well, I'm looking at Bruce Kim now with nobody on second base and just using one set of signs. Let's see what he's going to do here. He's got to stay with his fastball. He's got that good sinking fastball. Up towards second baseman Garcia. And on to Thompson, two away. There's no score. You know, one thing about uh, Pedro Garcia, he will come on very quickly after a ball. He'll not let it eat him up. And as you look here at Fidrich, he'll, uh, he'll move this fellow. He has great reaction on any kind of a ball. And here he reacts very quickly on this little bit of a uh, top shot. And he came on before he could get caught in between hop there. 
Here's Carlos May, the designated batter. Mr. Houck had some problems that way yesterday, I guess, Bob Uger. Yeah, he had two of them in the lineup. Two designated hitters. And no right and fielder. Yet, no right fielder. <laughs> but yet came on to win the ball game. And by that, we don't mean there was not a right fielder playing during the ball game, but he had to, the pitcher had to hit. Two nine inning. Or 11. One of the things about Pedrick is kind of unusual. In his last six starts, Detroit has won four games for him in their very last at bat. Jim, uh, by the way, the catcher has caught all of Pedrick's starts in the major league. They played together at Evansville last year. The thing I like about, about Mark Pedrick against this left-handed batting Yankee lineup he is not afraid to come inside to the left-handers as he did right there. You're going to see this guy do that all night long. The right-handed batters, as I said, he's got that good sinking fastball. He'll pitch it tight. He's got good stuff. That's a base hit to left field off the end of bat. Now, to show you about his velocity, the pitch before that, he fired the ball at 93 miles an hour on our Jugs Velocity Machine, Fridrich, and he just overpowered uh, Carlos May at that time, and he hit it weakly off the left side for the base hit. Now, here's Chris Chambliss. One thing that uh, manager Billy Martin wants to point out is that his ball club is a team of, uh, really a team of effort because uh, not one man can, can you say this one man has done it. He said, Shambliss has come up when he's had to, May, White, Rivers, Gamble, Hendricks, Munson, Munson Mason, everybody. He said, all hand to hand in it. Munson not playing tonight. He has a bad knee. Uh, ran into, well, Charlie Spikes ran into him in New York. And Willie Horton has a bad heel. He's not playing. In fact, he's on the inactive list. Well, on the check back. This is rather um, an easy ballpark, really, to hit him in. When we get a chance, we'll show you. This is, I shudder to think what Ted Williams would have done if he'd have played 22 years here. Or some other hitters I can think of. I absolutely shudder to think of the marks they'd have set. 1-1. One, one. Foul back, DiMaggio. You might never got him out. <laughs> Joe DiMaggio. Not only is this a, uh, well, it's an outstanding hitting park, Bob, as you said, you know, you would think with the center field stands as they're filled up here tonight, upper and lower deck, you would think it would be a bad hitting background, but this is an outstanding hitting background in Tiger Stadium. Well, it's just dark enough under the overhang out there. It's 340 down the left line, 325 to right, then fades out. Uh -huh. And Pidwick just threw it right by as he turned off the lights on Mr. Chambliss. So they span the runner, and we go now to the Detroit first inning, and there is no score. Ask a friend about Firestone, Firestone, Firestone. Well, I think the Firestone radio tires are the best tires ever made. A friend might not know that Firestone's long mileage steel belted Radio 500 is built by craftsmen, piece by piece, one at a time. But when it comes to how Firestone tires work, just ask a friend. Now, if you can't get a Firestone, I'll park it. Firestone. Here now are the Detroit Tigers as they introduce themselves for tonight's game. Ground the floor, outfield, Detroit, Michigan. I'm Verizon, I'm Rusty Staub, I play right field, and I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. That was Johnson designated here. I'm Jason Thompson, uh, a first baseman from Apple Valley, California. I'm Aurelio Rodriguez, for the Detroit Tigers, third base, and I'm from San Antonio, Sonora, Mexico. Mickey Stanley, left field, from Grand Rapids, Michigan. My name is Pedro Garcia. I play second best for Detroit Tigers, and I am from Guayana, Puerto Rico. Bruce Kim, Texas, Norway, Iowa. Good evening. I'm Mark Birch from Knoxville, Massachusetts. Massachusetts, and it's a uh, picture for the Detroit Tigers. I'm Ralph Houck, manager of the Detroit Tigers. Uh, I come from Lawrence, Kansas. Right now, I live in Pompano Beach, Florida.
Okay, we're set to go into the baseball here. We welcome the fans now that have joined us. Uh, there's a rain delay in the Chicago Cup Pittsburgh Pirates ball game. So we welcome all of you joining us as there is no score here. And Kenny Holtzman sends it on to Ron LaFleur. LaFleur at 349, two homers, 24 runs batted in. Holtzman 5-5 five, five on the year, 8-5 lifetime against the Tigers. We have a one ball, one strike count, no score. Nettles, Mason, Randolph, Chambliss, the infield. White Rivers, Gamble, left center, right for the Tigers. They're playing a very shallow right center field on LaFleur. Rivers can almost come in and shake hands with his second baseman. Three and one. You're looking, Bob, at probably one of the faster workers in the American League, talking about left-hander Kenny Holtzman, and he basically tries to work every right-handed batter away. Doesn't have that real good fastball anymore. But the one thing I think that aggravates Yankee catchers about Ken Holtzman is the fact that he changes speed so many times, throws so many changes up, you know, on his own. And they'd like to know what it is. Ron LaFleur has drawn a walk. Now, LaFleur, by the way, has had base hits in 54 of the 61 games that he's played. He's second in the American League in batting, so he's at first on a walk. And he has pretty good speed. Here comes now Tom Verizer. The shortstop at 239, one home and 18 runs out of there. You heard them all set themselves as where they were from and all, so we'll just stick with the ball game there, and the outfield will play him around the right. So Tom Verizer, standing in, 23 years of age, born in Port Jefferson, New York. All right, no balls in the strike. LaFleur, always a threat to steal. He's stolen 23 out of 36 attempts this year. Here's the bouncer, slowly bounced toward third, and they got the one play to second, not in time over at first. So Nettles went on to Willie Randolph on a 5-4 play on LaFleur. And Verizer safe at first on the fourth out, and the batter's going to be the great raconteur of the gourmet cooking, Rusty Stiles. Did you notice that LaFleur broke toward first just before that pitch? Yes, yeah. because I think a Holtzman's move made him go back, and uh, that tied him up just enough that they were able to make it easy at second. Rusty Staub is what Mr. Ricky would refer to as the matrimonial coward where Mr. Ricky were alive today. He's a very eligible violent and bachelor. One ball and no strikes here to Rusty Stop. And one and one now. So all of you just joining us from the rain delay game with Pittsburgh and uh, Chicago. Holtzman, of course, a former Cub. I don't have to tell all the fans out that way about that. And a foul off the right side. Rusty Stop uses a very short bat with a big barrel and uh, it's kind of an unusual bat. And he chokes up on it just a bit. He stings, stays in there, and I'll tell you that I've never seen a left-hander ever knock him off the plate. You can't do it. See how he was going in there? Kenny Holtzman's fastball, that was a breaking yeah. pitch, a little off-speed pitch that time to Rusty Stahl, but his fastball is around 86, 87 miles an hour right now, and I, I would have to think that's where Holtzman would stay throughout the night. Uh, bouncing foul wide of first. Stobbs in his first season in the American League. He spent 13 of them, of course, in the National League. In Montreal, where they're watching this game, he was known as Le Grand Orange. He was one of the real favorites up there. He has a fear of flying, but he is a gourmet cook, and uh, they're talking seriously about him putting out a cookbook. Out of New Orleans, Louisiana. That's hit deep to right field. Going way back, way back. It's a home run. Well, he hauled off and cow tailed that one, and that's what I meant about him not getting away. He does not give in to a left hand pitcher. He's not easy to intimidate. Big two-run blast.
last by Rusty Staub here in the Tiger first inning. Gives the young Mark Figrich a 2 nothing lead. All right, then Alex Johnson, the designated batter. And a strike to him. So two to nothing now. The Tigers on Staub's fourth homer and his 41st run batted in. And this near capacity crowd going wild. Up toward shortstop Mason. In time to Chambliss and uh, two away. They yeah. say, Warner, that uh, the Pedrich really helps draw a lot of people uh, about every well, time he pitches. I don't think there's any question about it. They uh, have averaged only 18,000. <laughs> They've got them nearly 50 tonight. I was just going to say, Alex Johnson didn't exactly run for his life on that ground ball. No, Alex doesn't get... I tell you, Warner, when you watch him throughout the course of the season, he doesn't get... He doesn't really get that teed up. Any ground balls hit on the infield. Now, if he gets the ball to the outfield someplace, he'll run a little bit, but nothing bothers A.J. All right, now this young man is Jason Thompson out of Hollywood, California. He missed almost all of the American League uh, month of the American League season the first month. He wasn't even on the Tiger Major League roster this spring, and they called him up from Evansville, found the way. Played only the last year in the minor leagues. And signed, by the way, as the Tigers' fourth selection in the 75 draft. That's how you can get healthy in a hurry if you draft well in baseball. Holtzman trailing by two. Outfield swung right. This ballpark, believe me, is unbelievable. We'll show you a little later on a spot where Babe Ruth is the first man to hit the ball ever over the right field roof. Back one, as you see, Ralph Hout. The manager, and of course, managing against his former Yankee ball club, Billy Martin. Bounced up toward first base. Now second baseman Randolph will get it. Tires for the out to retire the side. The Tigers break on top with a booming home run off the facade of the upper deck and right field by Rusty Staub, his fourth, with a man aboard. At the end of one, two nothing Detroit. the Boston Red Sox. You're looking good, Fred. You must know a lot about fashion, right? Wrong. This is what I know. Botany 500. When I wear a Botany 500 suit, I feel great. And my wife, Keating, tells me I look good, too. So after the game, I climb into my Botany 500 and head for the country. Because you can wear a Botany 500 anywhere. Except on a playing field. Botany 500. The first thing to look for in a suit. Thousand fans here tonight at Tiger Stadium to see 21-year-old Mark Figrich, the rookie sensation with a record of 7-1. and one. They want to see if he can beat the Yankees. The Yankees have won five in a row in first place. Now, the Tigers won three out of four from Boston over the weekend. They're only two games out of second. But most of these people, in all fairness to the rest of the Tigers and Yankees, have come to see Mark Figrich. He is a character. Some people refer to him as an eccentric. He will pat the mound. He'll talk to the ball. He'll congratulate his players after an excellent play. So that's the situation as we go to the second inning. All right. One thing, too, about uh, Fidrich, this is the first time he's pitched against the Yankees. So uh, this is a new experience for him as well as for them. That could make it a little difficult on the Yankees, too, Bob Huker. It's going to be interesting to see uh, Mark Fidrich now working against Greg Nettles. Nettles had a couple of home runs in the uh, ball game in the second ball game yesterday in New York against Milwaukee, and he's come on the last few ball games. He was around 209 about four days ago. He's up to 225, so he's starting to hit the ball. All right, we got a count now. Uh, ball two, no strikes. The tarp ball is being removed in Pittsburgh at Three River Stadium, and uh, we'll be rejoining that game shortly once it resumes. And there's a ball popped up the third base side. Rodriguez going back. Fair territory. The ball's spinning in there. He grabbed it. And he had to stay right with that one. That was a tough play. Well, I'll tell you a fast story. Rodriguez uh, in Boston Thursday night. Fiedrich pitching two outs. Pop up to Rodriguez to end the game. And Rodriguez dropped the ball. And Fiedrich went over and patted Rodriguez right in the middle of the game with two outs. He said, Aurelio, it's all right. Don't worry about it. And he struck out Petroselli <laughs> in the game. He told Rodriguez he was going to strike out Petroselli, and he did. <laughs> All right, Oscar Gamble stepping in. Born out in Alabama, and a strike to him. This program is being brought to you as an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Oscar Gamble fouls one off 
to his forearm. Strike two. Remind you again, too, you know, we've got a ball game coming up next Monday night that ought to roll them nationally. Everywhere you want to take a good look. The Philadelphia Phillies may be the best team in baseball. They're, they're over that way, they'll tell you they are. They're going to be playing the Dodgers. We're going to have it right here on ABC next Monday night. There's a foul tip. Not hell. The Philadelphia Phillies, you know, uh, have whacked the Cincinnati Reds six out of eight. They've beaten the Dodgers five out of seven. They're just really a pretty sound baseball club, gentlemen. No question about it. And uh, like you say, we'll see them on Monday night, the Philadelphia Phillies and the Dodgers. Might as well pitch a 10 over there, huh? We also have the All-Star game coming up in the middle of July, and that'll be right here on ABC. One ball, two strikes to Aurelio Rodriguez, foul back. I mean, uh, Mickey Stan, Oscar Gamble. I'm looking at the, uh, we got Sir McCartan. Greg Nettles popped up to third. I wanted to check one thing on uh, Holzman. He's 8-5 and five lifetime against the Tigers, so he's not had a real lead against them. There's a the ball hit high right. Looks like it's playable by Staub. It is. And a fair ball catch. So Oscar Gamble retires. You know that Ellie Hendricks is catching for the uh, Yankees tonight. And as we mentioned earlier, Munson was hurt. We're going to take a look at the play in which Munson was hurt. It was in Yankee Stadium. And it was a fly ball to right fielder Elliot Maddox. And Charlie Spikes, big guy, 6'2", 225, tags up from third. Maddox, beautiful throw to Munson, who puts it on him for the out. But Spikes crashed into Munson. And four months in is down, and he is not playing, and he hasn't played since that ball game. Courtesy of that play, by the way, from WJW Cleveland. The batter is Elrod Hendricks. He came to the Yankees in the host for zero. Well, one thing I want to point out now about Mark Fidrich, it's very important because it's a very short ballpark here in right field. Fidrich is continually pitching those left-handed batters inside. There's not much margin for error in there. You see Elrod Hendricks now really step off the plate, and Bruce Kim, the catcher, is sitting way inside on Hendricks, giving a good target for Fidrich. That's hit very deep down the right center, going back to Staub, and uh, that baby, you can kiss it goodbye. Elrod hit number three out of here, and it's a two-to-one ball game. He came inside that time with not enough on it and got stoked. That's the one thing I was just talking about. Uh, with this Yankee batting order, with the left-handed batters in there, Fidrich continually throwing inside. But if you're going to pitch in there, you can't make mistakes. And Elrod Hendricks nailed that fastball, and it's now a two-to-one ball game. You know, speaking of Hendricks, uh, they asked him what it felt like to come over from the Orioles to the Yankees. He said, look, man, at age 35, I'm happy to come anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that was the 18th home run on Monday Night Baseball here at ABC. 15 of it come with nobody on base. Running as we're setting the record. Willie Randolph stepping in now, and what a steal he's been. All right, we are going to join the Pittsburgh Baseball Club now with Al Michaels and uh, Norm Cash and Bob Gibson. The resumption of the ball game down in Chicago, uh, in Pittsburgh with the Chicago Cubs. All right, high fly ball, left field, Mickey Stanley and LaFleur. LaFleur cuts in front of him, the center fielder. And makes the grab. So Elrod Hendricks hits a home run to bring the Yankees part way back at the end of one and a half. It's 2 1 Detroit. What does it take to make a car both elegant and affordable? A car must be rich looking to the eye, yet solid, stable, responsive. Chevrolet Concourse. Of course. Fine touring automobiles have a sophistication, a feeling of quality the driver both expects and admires. Concourse, of course. But a car still needs a Chevrolet price. Concourse is priced under $4,000. Concourse, of course. Concourse, of course. What you're about to see are the kinds of people who own America's oil companies. Over 2 million Americans invest in America's major oil companies. Over half of them women. Almost half are retired. Colleges invest in universities. Another 12 million invest through programs that invest for them, like mutual funds. Who owns America's oil companies? Over 14 million Americans who put their trust in companies like Texaco. We're working to keep that trust. Okay, Milwaukee, Cleveland, 5-5 in the fourth. 
Baltimore on top of Boston, 5-4. That's also in the fourth inning. Philadelphia leading Montreal 2-0, and I'll tell you, Philadelphia's only lost 20 games. Cardinals and the Mets are 1-1 in the fourth. Houston beating uh, beat San Francisco this afternoon in Candlestick 8-2. So those are pretty much the situations of the scores. You know, there was a very historic blow struck here. We'll get a chance. We'll show you right now. Stepping in is a... Aurelio Rodriguez, the third baseman, batting at 263, four homers, 28 runs batted in. He was born in Canamea, Sonora, Mexico. Purchased by the California Angels back in 66, and then they sent him to the Senators in 70, and they moved him on to Detroit. He was in the Denny McLean deal. We, we used to call him the Senor from Sonora. He's batting 263, four homers, 28 runs batted in. Plays at third. That's it, right field, and Oscar Gamble has a play. Right out in that territory, an historic event took place in right field. And the first ball ever hit up over there was hit by Babe Ruth. It was number 700. He did it in July of 1934. One year later, he hit his last home run, and the first ever struck at Forbes Field over the right field route. And he went off the field never to play or never to hit another ball. He retired one day later in Cincinnati as a member of the Boston Braves. That is some Pope. Doc Ellis, a member of the Yankee Ball Club, as you watch Mickey Stanley stand in the left fielder, sent a pitch in here in the All-Star game that uh, Reggie Jackson almost dismantled that structure. <laughs> he hit it a ton. It rattled around up there for an hour. 2-1 score, one down. And the two belongs to Detroit as Mickey Stanley, the left fielder. Foul back. Ball two and strike one. You know, as you watch Kenny Olsen pitch, uh, looking in the Yankee dugout, that's Yogi Berra, third base coach Dick Hauser. You watch Ken Olsen pitch, you always, you know, they talk about young pitchers always pick, picking up that target very quickly. Nettles from third will throw him out. You watch Holtzman. He doesn't pick up the target until he's, well, he's almost delivered the baseball. He's got his head completely turned around before he ever lets loose of the ball. Nettles, a pretty good defensive third baseman. Uh, perhaps doesn't get too much credit there, but he is an excellent third baseman. Speaking of Hendricks before, uh, Munson did pinch it on Sunday twice, singled in the first game, and then had a two-run double in the second game. Now, this is Pedro Garcia from Guayama, Puerto Rico. He uh, bats at 264, one homer, 14 runs batted in. He's playing second base. We talked to you about how fast he can charge and move in. One strike. The plate umpire is George Maloney out of Miami, Florida. Jim McCann is from Montreal, Canada, by the way, is the umpire at first base. He's the first umpire that I know of, born outside the United States. He's in Canada. And then uh, Mitch Lemigan of Rochester, New York, umpires at second. And Russ Getz from Glassport, Pennsylvania, is at third. So there are your umpires. Maloney, McCann, Remigan, and Getz. They are, uh, they umpire with that chest protector. They are allowed to go inside if they want. That's hit high left field and playable by Roy White. The left fielder getting under, and the Tigers put the Yankees down in one, two, three fashion. And at the end of two innings of play, Detroit on top, two to one. gymnastics competition as our top stars try for a place on the U.S. team next month in Montreal. All the excitement of the U.S. women's diving trials and coverage of Operation Sail 
as an incredible array of ships line up in preparation for their entrance into New York Harbor on the 4th of July, all next Saturday on ABC. That is not a member of the Detroit ground crew. That's starting pitcher Mark Fiedrich, who pats the mound. He manicures the mound before each inning. That's one of his idiosyncrasies. And if he continues to win, Eddie, every kid in the country is going to do it. Fiedrich, explain why he does it before each inning. Oh, I've always done that. That's just because I like to start and dig my own hole. Because the other person digs their own hole for their feet to go comfortable to land and all that. I want my own hole for the way I land so I don't get into another person's rut or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Then that way I'll like make shots dry because I'm trying to hit his hole. So, so if I make it all level, then I hit my own hole and make my own holes. And then he fills in his, my hole too if you really notice it. But he just does it with his feet or something. Or he digs it out because he doesn't like it. You know, he wants it deeper or something like that. It's just the way I do it. Well, it's been pretty good. He's 7-1. I tell you, there's really nothing wrong with it. And as Mark Fiedrich said, a lot of pitchers do it with their feet. He does it with his hand. Nothing wrong with that. This is Jim Mason out of Mobile, Alabama. He's the shortstop. It'd be a shame if his parents come to a ball game and see him doing that and think something happened and he got cramps or something out there. <laughs> they saw him pitch last Thursday in Boston. Got a pretty good fastball. A jugs machine is measuring it up around uh, 90 some odd miles an hour. That's better than average velocity, I'll tell you that. One ball, one strike. Bounced up toward Randolph. And, or rather, up toward uh, Garcia. And uh, he throws on to Thompson. That'll bring up Mickey Rivers now. Mickey bounced out to first base. Two to one score. Here's the way it happened. In the first inning with Holtzman pitching. One down, Verizer at first base, and Rusty Staub hit his fourth home of the year. Boom, the deep upper deck. Make it 2 nothing. But with two out, Elrod Hendricks hit the facade with a home run off uh, Fiedrich, and now it's a 2-1 ball game. One out to Mickey Rivers. We are in the third. There he is. Look at him. He's talking to it now. Fiedrich talking to that ball. Wow. That caught a little of everybody, including the plate umpire. George Maloney on the uh, shin guard. You know, the one thing I think a lot of people wonder about a, a youngster like Mark Fidrich, he's 7-1, and one, he's got all the antics out the mound. Look at him right there. He's talking to He's him. talking, he's telling the ball where he wants it to go. I think that doesn't bother you as a hitter. I'm telling you, it's got to. Come on, ball, right down there. And right down on a fine play by Jason Thompson. Well, he must be saying, I want you to move inside. I want you to slide. This time, I want you to sink. And I'll tell you, and if you hear this thing, then if you don't believe it, then you're in real trouble, aren't you? Well, he did something to Don Money, the Brewer third baseman, one day. He was standing up, and he was talking about, I got to get a little extra on this ball. I got to throw this one hard. I got to really get something on this ball. And he threw him a slider. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't believe yeah. him all the time when he's right. talking out there. I was just wondering whether or not, you know, like you could fake a guy behind the plate like Kim could set to the outside, throw him inside. He could fake him with what he's saying. Ball one here to Roy White. Bounced out the second first time up. And slams a ball a little doer down the left field line. That thing running loose out there. And Roy's got himself a two-base popper. Oh, that's what you call back control there. Uh, you're talking about a guy like Roy White, Bob Prince. And, uh, you know, when you got a young fellow like Fiedrich, we talked earlier, constantly stays downstairs. He's got that good sinking fastball that he's going to try to ride away from a left-handed batter. Roy White just went up there looking for that pitch, and he hit it down the third base side. The one thing I wanted to bring up about Fidrich, you talk about this youngster, he's won seven loss when it's happened many times before where a pitcher goes around the league the first time, and the second time around, they beat his brains out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the more I watch this guy and the way he pitches, staying downstairs, I believe he's got it all. Well, one thing he does have, apparently, uh, beside the velocity, which we've already measured with the jugs, the velocity machine, he has good location. And he does not walk to the batter. And uh, let's take a look. He's got an ERA at 2.18. He's won seven, lost one. This is his uh, ninth start. Bounce down towards second. And they throw him out. So, Pedrich spans a double by Roy White. And we're going out of the bottom half of the third inning in front of jam-packed Tiger Stadium in Detroit. Two to one, the Tigers. 
I had the honor of managing the National League team in the 1976 All-Star Game in Philadelphia on July 13th. Next to winning the World Series, there's no greater thrill than participating in an All-Star Game. You, too, can be involved by electing the starting players. All-Star battles for free at stores featuring All-Star display and at the major and minor league ballparks. Voting ends July 4th, so be sure to vote early. The preceding was a message on behalf of Major League Baseball. We're looking at a young man now by the name of Bruce Kim, K-I-M-M. -M. He's the catcher batting at 2 uh, oh, uh, 246, no homers and two runs batted in. Out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And there is that little youngster of son of his, Tyson Kim. They had a family night out here tonight, and I'll tell you, they've had some fun. All the daddies came out with the mom, and the youngsters dressed in their junior Tiger uniforms, and they played themselves quite a ball game. The only game I ever used to get to start. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I used to aggravate me when I was kids at hitting. Throw that ball in, huh? Bust him inside, go ahead. Milt May uh, broke his ankle, and uh, they called uh, Kim up to replace Milton while he's on the disabled list, but he's done quite well. He's out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Hey, watch Ken Holzman. Watch when he delivers now. He's not, he's not looking at Elrod Hendricks at all. And that ball's popped in the shallow right field, and Oscar that's going to be the center fielder. That's going to grab it. That's his territory, Mickey Rivers. You know, the Yankees haven't been nine in front since 1963, and not been nine in front so early in the year since 1958. So they are, without a doubt, a very fine baseball club. Here's Ron LaFleur. He walked his first time up. The Tigers lead 2-1. Verizer at first when Staub hit one off the out to right field. And with two down, none on, Elrod Hendricks hit his third. And thus it's 2-1. Tigers lead one out in the third. Kenny Holtzman's fastball now around 88 miles an hour. The first time we got him, he was around 87. So he's hooked it up a bit. Dave Kingman just nailed one for the Mets, number 26, and the fourth was done on to put them up in front of the Cardinals, two to one. Sky King is going crazy. Well, listen now, he might have 30 by the All-Star break, and then you have to start thinking seriously about the 60 and the 61. Bounce toward third, it hits the bag. Oh, it's a fair ball. It hit the coach. And now that keeps it in play, Joe Schultz. That would have been a very <laughs> interesting situation if it doesn't hit Schultz. It's going to go on into the dugout. It's going to land. It's going to land along that yep. tarpaulin on the third base side. You see Ron LaFleur now, a little chopper. This ball hits the edge of the bag. And as Bob Prince said, if it doesn't hit Joe Schultz, <laughs> well, Joe's still as quick as he always was. I don't want to be remembered, as Jim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a ricochet off a bag that way no. going toward the dugout. <laughs> no, I haven't either. Now, I saw where that tarpaulin is wrapped. I saw Dick Stewart hit a home run at Wrigley Field one day that bounced over the bag and hit something and went into the tarpaulin, into the tunnel. He had no ground rule. He got an inside-the-park home run. Uh, you see a lot of funny things in this game. You know, you wonder about the, the coaching boxes now. They, they've got them marked off, and uh, the coach, they say, is supposed to stand in that coaching box. But if you get a look at Dick Brzezuski, he's well out of it at first base, and Joe Schultz has got... His prerogative, if he wants to stand on the grass, that's up to him. He just wasn't quick enough to get out We're of the way. Going. And the throw by Hendricks. High. Golden base. The floor has gone in there. Oh, what a jump he had on Holtzman. And a good jump on Kenny Holtzman. But you're going to see L. Rod Hendricks now. His throw is high and not much on it. Jim Mason, the shortstop, taking the throw and sliding underneath him. Ron LaFleur, you look from another angle. He had it beat all the way. He's well behind Jim Mason when he came to the bag. That's number 24 in the stolen base department as Verizon just checked the, checked the plate there. A ball, one strike, two count, two one Tigers. And LaFleur out of second base with one down. First Tigers you see in 42 years to steal 20 bases for three consecutive years. Oh, Holtzman pumped that up and he thought he had strike. Talking about doing the Philadelphia game next week. Well, Mr. Schmidt just nailed number 21. 
Now the Phillies beat Montreal 3 0 there in the sixth inning. We'll be there with ABC mics and cameras next Monday. How back. That base hit by Ron LaFleur now puts his hitting streak at 11 ball games. He was a player that had the big 30 game streak uh, earlier in the season, finally stopped. But now on an 11 game tear again, that rolling office with the Braves that is stopped at 29, I believe it was. A ball two strike two count here, the Barrazer. That's hit high right center field deep. Rivers and Gamble with speed, and it'll be Rivers that'll grab it, tagging the floor, and will come easily to third. Now the floor can score only uh, actually on the base hit or the errant play. So there is that much of an edge by going over. I think Ron LaFleur, too, by Prince, with the, you know, he's got the outstanding speed, as we've said, but with Mickey Rivers in center field, I don't think Mickey Rivers has really got that kind of an arm, the outstanding throwing arm, and Ron LaFleur knows that. He had the good break off second base, and he made third base no problem. And on top of that, as you know, we all just saw Rivers had to go over to his left turn and all those things. By the way, LaFleur and Staub ranked two and four in the American League voting for the All-Star Ball Club. And ABC will be covering that for you, too. All right, now here's uh, La Grand Orange, as he was known, Rusty Staub. He hit the four run, uh, the two-run homer, his fourth of the year. Now watch him, particularly. He will not give away the left-hand pitching. This is one of the reasons why he's so tough. You cannot make him back out of there. Steps right into it, Danny Uke. I think one of the reasons, too, uh, why Rusty Staub hits so many balls to the opposite field, Bob. He hangs in there very well. Right fielder, rather the left fielder, Roy White, is playing him well off the line in left field. Well, he has a very classic swing. One ball, two strikes. Notice how short his bat is when you get a chance here. Uh, well, he got him. He turned his lights out. So, no runs, a hit, no errors, and one left. At the end of three innings, the Tigers on top of the Yankees, two to one. And I get to do commercials. But when I opened my own restaurant last year, I faced the same problem as any new businessman, how to reach people. The Yellow Pages helped put my restaurant on the map, and it's still the biggest part of our advertising. If you want to go into business, the Yellow Pages can help you, too, even if your name's not Johnny Ben. Let your fingers do the walking. It's a snap. Advertise in the Yellow Pages. All right, you see the score. The Tigers on top. Two runs on two hits. The Yankees one on three. Kenny Holtzman, a left-hander, eight and five lifetime against Detroit. And uh, going at him right now trails one run to two on a home run by Rusty Staub. Rusty hit it in the first inning with Verizon aboard. Rusty's fourth home of the year. Meanwhile, Mark Fiedrich, in his first time ever against the Yankees, has served up only three hits. One of them left the park off the bat of Elrod Hendricks, his third home of the year back in the second inning. So we're sitting on top of a whale of a ball game, Bob Uecker. It's two to one, Detroit. All right, Bob Prince, thank you very much. And Chris Shambles, the Yankee first baseman, starts it off here in the top half of the fourth inning. That sign you saw a couple of moments ago for Mark Fidrich, they're all over Detroit. Dave came in my room this morning. She had one on, on her back. The Birdman. There's an inside fastball, 1-0. Chris Shambles was called out on strikes his first time up. As you get a good look at Mark Fidrich. Right field, Rusty Staub, running grab, and he's got it. Fine running grab by Rusty Staub in right center field. Taking an extra base and away from Chris Shamblis. Well, one of the things about Rusty Staub is he breaks about as quickly as anybody. The moment he heard that bat and ball sound, he just took off and went and really made it look very easy. One down brings up the Yankee third baseman, Greg Nettles. See how easily he's right there. He just roars back, and uh, he had it very, very easily right in the glove. In fact, he almost overran the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in one to Nettles. There you see his stats. 224, over 11 times. And he's knocked in 33 runs. Talk to it, Mark. 
Be careful inside, too. That's what he's saying. He hung a slider and he got away with it. Two strikes to middle. There you see Mark Pickett. That's one of the reasons they call him the bird. Have him after the bird on Sesame Street. Tall, lean, and he's got webbed feet. No, that's not true. Inside breaking ball. He's a right-hander. <laughs> There you see the shortstop, Tom Verizer, playing almost behind the bag at second base for Nettles. The flames quickly to pull. Right field base in. Nettles lines a single to right field. And that for the Yankees is their fourth base hit off Mark Fidrich. Just for the record, uh, I'm sure the fans know, but of course, when a batted ball, as in the case of uh, hitting accidentally hitting uh, Joe Schultz. Same thing if a ball hit an umpire in play. They rule that the umpire, or the coach in that case, is part of the field. It's as simple as that. Of course, the coach can't pick up the ball. <laughs> they have to slam at a coach when you walk up to him before a ball game and say, look, you're part of the field. So. Oscar Gamble, high outside. There you see Mark Fidrich. He's indicating where he let that ball go, and he wants to come through a little bit more with it young guy knows what he's doing. Knows what he wants to do anyway. And he'll do it again. He's well, a shot of the crowd here. Well, this place is jammed up tonight. Breaking ball is high. Three and nothing. That's the first time tonight that he's gone three and oh on a battle. Three and nothing to Oscar Gamble. Tigers two. And the Yankees won with the fourth inning. Bullseye. Good thinking fastball around the knees. You know, Nettles is on first base has stolen more bases this year than he had in the previous four years combined. And we might see him go. Oscar Gamble. Left center field chasing LaFleur. He's going to get there. He's got it. Ron LaFleur hauls down that drive off the bat of Oscar Gamble. Two down brings up Elrod Hendrick to catch it. Well, now Oscar there just turns with that speed of his and goes back, has it very, very much in sight, and is really just sitting right there. You don't often see very many great catches in baseball. That's just an average catch made by a very fine major leaguer. That's why it's so average. Here's Elrod Hendricks, the catcher. He homered his last time up. And his first time up. He looks at a curveball. Elrod Hendricks has been splitting the New York catching duties with Fran Healy in place of Thurman Munson, who, as we told you before, was injured in a collision at home plate with Charlie Spikes. And that just missed. Ball one, strike one. What would Pedrich do if the batter started talking back to him? Says, that ball didn't come in there where you said it was going to come in. That would be some dialogue, wouldn't it? Aurelio Rodriguez, who saw a shot in playing way off the bag for Hendricks. Right field up in the air. Not deep. Ron LaFleur in right center. Puts it away. Sides retired. In the Yankee fourth, no run. One hit, no errors, one left. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Tigers two, Yankees one.
Here's a very interesting shot, Bob Euchre, of uh, looking right through the interstices of the screen and straight on out inside those holes in the screen. Look, I mean, that's that what background. What did you say to what? You know, through the interstices of that screen. But you know, that's that background you were talking about, Bob, out there in center field. Really makes it an outstanding hitter's background, doesn't it? Well, you wouldn't think it would be that way, as, as we said earlier, with the, the crowd sitting in the upper deck, the lower deck. But there is a very dark area, as you said, Bob Prince, out there. It's a very nice hitting background here. This is a great hitting ballpark, Tiger Stadium. You know, you wonder what uh, designated hitters do between innings. Carlos May just warmed up uh, Kenny Holtzman be between the innings. Baltimore and Boston, while we have a moment, are 7-7 seven, seven at the end of five. Uh, Duncan hit a homer there. Milwaukee and Cleveland. Cleveland leading your club 5-3. Your Milwaukee club's having a little trouble there, Mr. Euchre. They've been having problems. There you see Alex Johnson and two members of his family. Young man. Played in the father-son game. You can tell the guy got a base hit. The little boy had a base hit. The girl 0 for 1. <laughs> <laughs> Foul tip by Johnson. Alexander Johnson Jr. and his daughter Jennifer. 1-1 one one to A.J. Right field. Oh. Leaping grab by Shambliss. He's got it. A fine leaping grab by the first baseman, Chris Shambliss, on that line drive headed toward right field. You remember, Bob Uecker, the amount of criticism as we watch this replay again on the drive and the leap up by Shambliss, how much this, that deal for him was criticized a year or so ago and how it's paying off for the Yankees now. Chris Shambliss, well, oh, he's been outstanding, I'll tell you. Jason Thompson, the first baseman. Ten home runs, 33 RBIs, hitting a 238. Well, here is a guy that Tigers really like. Inside missing fastball. What a find. He was in California State College last year. And he hit three home runs early in the season. Right center field. Mickey Rivers has got this one. Puts it away. Two down. Hit three home runs early in the season in Evansville. They said, hey, let's bring this kid up here. And now, of course, he leads the Tigers in home runs with ten. And that Philadelphia Montreal game, where we'll be next uh, weekend, or next Monday night, Philadelphia Dodger game. Philadelphia leading Montreal 4 2 at the end of six. Carlton against Rogers, and that one, Mike Smith, the big home run. Slick fielding, Aurelio Rodriguez, the Tiger third baseman. Fly to right field his first time up. We're in the fourth, and the Tigers lead it 2 to 1. Short stop side, Jim Mason. Shambliss has got it, size retired. One, two, three inning for Detroit in the fourth. They get nothing. At the end of four innings, two to one, Detroit. First time he held me in his arms. And the best thing is, I still feel the same way today. It shouldn't matter that you wear dentures. Not if you use new formula Polyvet. We've added more cleansers to Polyvet more oxygen whitener, and the unique penetrating ingredient, all to make this new formula the best cleaning polygon ever. So you can stay close, as always. New formula polygon. We want you to stay close. Well, Tiger Stadium officially holds 54,226, and I'll tell you, they've got close to it, and if I'm Mark Friedrich's agent, if he has one, I've got to ask for an attendance clause last next year, because... The Tigers have averaged only 18,000 this year, and here is Mark pitching, and they pulled in over 50,000. And speaking of attendance, don't forget the Olympics here on ABC coming up on July the 17th, Saturday, July 17th, the Olympics for Montreal. Well, there'll be some huge crowds there, no doubt about that, and millions of viewers all over the world watching ABC send those Summer Olympics from uh, beautiful city of Montreal. Now, you know, here's something. If you'd have said to this young man, Bob Euchre, Willie Randolph in 1972, how would you like to be playing for the Yankees? In 1972, he was playing for Bradenton, Florida. That's his first year of professional baseball. He's done a fine job for the Yankees, I'll tell you that. Fiedrich delivers. That's that sinking fastball. One and nothing. He's challenging Grish, you know, who just hit a home run to put Baltimore in front of Boston 8-7 for the starting spot in the All-Star game at second base for the American League. No one outside, two and nothing. Yeah. Mark Pedrich has only fallen behind on one batter. That was Greg Nettles. Went 3-0 and before Nettles' base hit him. Bullseye with a fastball. Two and one. I think one rule of thumb always on a successful pitcher when those you compare the strikeouts to the walks. 
Shortstop side, Tom Verizer. Strong throw, and he got him. In this case, Speedrick has struck out twice as many batters as he has walked. Usually, that's a, a pretty safe rule of thumb. You know, it's not hard either, Warner, when you watch a guy like Speedrick, just sitting behind him or even behind home plate. He's got to be a nice guy to catch. He's got to be easy to catch. He's around the plate all the time. He's downstairs. There you see him again, talking to the ball and indicating where he wants to throw this next pitch or around the area where he wants to throw it. And he missed not by much. A ball and no strikes. Jim Mason, the Yankees shortstop. Left center field, Mickey Stanley is there, called off by LaFleur, but Stanley grabs that one. I don't think Ron LaFleur has got speed. He got to Stanley in a big hurry. Stanley was playing well in the left center field for Jim Mason. As you look at Mickey Stanley, the Tiger veteran. This is his first time in left field tonight. First game in left field, that's right. But you know, he's played every this position you can think of. Played yeah. all over. Well, everywhere but pitch and catch, I think. I thought he's played every other position but pitch and catch. Mickey Rivers, the leadoff batter and the center fielder. Second base side. Pete Garcia, throw got him, sides retired. Easy inning. Or young Mark Fidrich sits the Yankees down one, two, three. No problem for Fiedrich. In the Yankee fifth, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. In the middle of inning number five, Detroit two, New York one. What you're about to see are the kinds of people who own America's oil companies. Over two million Americans invest in America's major oil companies. Over half of them women. Almost half are retired. Colleges invest and universities. Another 12 million invest through programs that invest for them, like mutual funds. Who owns America's oil companies? Over 14 million Americans who put their trust in companies like Texaco. We're working to keep that trust. Sometimes Bank of Maricard can make all the difference. A lot of kids on hand tonight among the uh, 50,000. And, you know, speaking of kids, Mickey Stanley came up to this club uh, 13 years ago. He was one of the youngest among the veterans. Now it's the other way around. Well, it's a different uh, type of feeling, Warren. You try to set an example now. Back when I was young, I used to climb around, horse around the ball field and make some bonehead uh, plays during the course of a ball game. Now I have to try and set an example, do the right things fundamentally, and hope that the younger kids uh, catch on, and maybe I can be a big asset to the ball club that way. Remember he played shortstop in the World Series yes, 1968. I'll tell you, I've always liked this guy, Mickey Stanley. He's one of those guys, uh, you know, now in a ball club, as you said, Warner, he's a veteran ball player, but he can play any place for you, and he's going to do a good job hitting it 314 starting tonight's ball game. Ken Holston missing outside of the ball. You know, he once also played 164 errorless games in the outfield, handled 500 chances. Two and nothing. There is Pedro Garcia, Tigers second baseman, and the Tigers acquired from the Milwaukee Brewers for Gary Sutherland. Strikes is George Maloney, but a little delayed action on that call. Ball two, strike one to Mickey Stanley, leading off the Tigers fifth inning. Oh, I'm going to bad pitch and look out. Here come the towels. Huh? Usually they wave the towels. Now, well, Mickey Stanley, a golf glove on the left hand. They, call them, they don't really call them golf gloves anymore. They call them hitting gloves now. It's got a little pine tar on that bat, too, but it slips out of his hand. In the air to short left field, Roy White puts it away, one down. You know, one thing, Bob Euchre, uh, Kenny Holzman trailing here by a run. He saw a stop take him downtown with a man aboard the riser. And then uh, Hendricks got one back off uh, Petrie. You know, he really played an awful lot of one-run decisions. 
1975, he lost six one-run decisions when he led the American League with 58 assists, and he had 18 victories. So he keeps in that ball game like we were talking about earlier at the start of the show. Garcia takes down by the ball. Uke, uh, this guy played with your ball club, the Brewers, and came over in the trade for Sutherland. He said the Brewers didn't get enough for him. <laughs> Second base side, Randolph. Nice play. Throw got him. Willie Randolph. That extra effort with speed. Boy, what an asset speed is. That's about Pete man. Garcia who can run. Yes, he can. Now, as you watch Randolph, he can go wide, left, and everything you want to know about. Pittsburgh traded him for, along with Brett and Doc Ellis, for George Medich. That was the deal. Now, Brett, of course, has gone on to throw a one-hitter for the White Sox. This is Bruce Kim, the catcher. You know, Warner, getting back to what you said about Pete Garcia, I think the one thing that hurt Pedro more than anything else, he had 15 home runs his first year in the big leagues. One and one to Bruce Kim. And he's not that kind of a hitter. He's not a power hitter. He's not the guy that's going to hit the home runs for you all year long. And the, the Brewers tried to get him to change, hit the ball more toward right field. And he just couldn't accept it. Willie Randolph. He's going to have to hurry. Oh! The Bruce Kim had a chance to beat that ball out. I don't know if Randolph saw would have got him anyway. Here's Randolph. He broke the wrong way now on that ball. Well, the reason he did is that the ball was hit in a very peculiar fashion off the end of bat. And as he let that ball go right there, you can see he didn't have a very good grip on it. It almost picks off the umpire, practically picked off the coach, and almost nailed the youngster down on the side. So he gets uh, up into the second base, and let's see how they're going to rule. I think they rule the base hit. Going to be an error. Yep. An error on the second base, but the floor missing. One strike to him. Tigers have a runner in scoring position. Bruce Kim at second. They lead it 2-1. to one. We're in the fifth inning. Again, two strikes to LaFleur. That's the one thing about Ken Holtzman. You know, a catcher might put down a sign for a fastball or a hard slider, but Holtzman, on his own, will change speed. He'll pull a spring on you once in a while. There's that change-up curve by Kenny Holtzman. Ball one, strike two to round LaFleur. Two and out, and a runner on second base. Got him. Good breaking ball by Holzman. Strikes out around the floor to end the fifth inning. We'll be back with more baseball after this word from our local stations. This is ABC. You know, before the ball game, uh, Steve Grilly, the right-hander for the Tigers, came up to me and actually introduced himself. He's from Brooklyn, and he said, uh, Warner, I, I'd really appreciate it if you could say hello to my father, Julio Grilly, who was taken to the hospital in New York. So, uh, Mr. Grilly, if you're watching, uh, your son gives his regards, and uh, we wish you everything okay. Here's part of the huge crowd in Tigers Stadium tonight. They're up in the 50s. This place is jam-packed. You know, this has always been a great baseball town. Oh, Detroit. you got to like to play here. We start the Yankee sixth inning. And Roy White, the left fielder, leads it off. 288, he's homered five times and knocked in 31 runs. He doubled his last time up. Strike one to Roy White. His first time up, he bounced to second. In the third, he doubled down the left field line. Center field going to be an easy play for Ron LaFleur. Puts it away, one down. Oh, well, Mark Kendrick continues to sail along. One out in the Yankees, six. Brings up the designated hitter, Carlos May. And there's a look at young Mark Kendrick. Doing some talking. A ball 
ball and no strikes to me. Struck out. See, he had a single his first time up. Count even one and one. That is the Yankee first baseman, Chris Chablis. Two and one to Carlos May. Well, oh, look at that young guy talk to himself. I tell you, if that ball starts talking back, he's in trouble. That is in trouble, right. Good fastball. Fastball. Two and two to May. Boy, Rodriguez, the third baseman, is playing him a good 15 feet off the line at third. And he missed. Full house count to Carlos May. Mickey Stanley well off the line in left field for Carlos May. They play him strictly to pull. Quite a gap for him in left center field. He stays alive on a good breaking ball from Fidrich. knows where he wants this pitch to be. Second base side, Pedro Garcia. Throw to Thompson, two down. Well, Chris Shambliss coming up. You know, he uh, almost went to Arizona State on a football scholarship, uh, went to UCLA and was offered a uh, deal by the Reds, but declined. Yes, I have. Uh, might still be in a minor league, but I'm going to trade it sooner. Uh, I was drafted twice by the Reds, and... Uh, I didn't sign because they didn't offer enough money for, for me coming out of college like that. When I, I, I did have eligibility in college, and I could just go ahead and play college ball. So, so I decided to stay in the college and try to have a better year, and maybe I could come up with a better bonus. Hit in the air to left field. Mickey Stanley puts it away. Sides retired. Another easy inning for the young right-hander, Mark Fidrich. In the middle of inning number six, two to one. Detroit. Ask a friend about Firestone, Firestone, Firestone. Well, I think a Firestone radio tar is the best tar they ever made. A friend might not know that Firestone's long mileage steel belted Radio 500 is built by craftsmen, piece by piece, one at a time. But when it comes to how Firestone tires work, just ask a friend. Now, if you can't get a Firestone, I'll park it. Firestone. Wide World of Sports continues its exclusive coverage of the United States Olympic Trials with men's gymnastics competition. As our top stars try for a place on the U.S. team next month in Montreal, all the excitement of the U.S. women's diving trials and coverage of Operation Sail as an incredible array of ships line up in preparation for their entrance into New York Harbor on the 4th of July, all next Saturday on ABC. Okay, now in the action elsewhere, let's say in the American League, Baltimore and Boston, 8-7 Baltimore. In the bottom half of the sixth inning with home runs by Duncan and Gritch. Uh, Flanagan and, uh, well, now Palmer's out and May is pitching. Jones started and Jenkins is on. 5-3 end of seven and a half innings. Cleveland over Milwaukee. Lowenstein and Hendrick uh, hit home runs there. Kansas City, Minnesota, 2 nothing end of two innings in favor of Minnesota. Leonard against Singer. No score end of four. Oakland at Texas, Norris and Umbarger. And uh, we'll pick up some National League scores a little later on, Bob Uber. Tom Reiser starts it off in the Tigers sixth inning. A Ken Holzman fastball. One and nothing to Tom Reiser. Headed back over the bag at second. Randolph throw and he got him. Willie Randolph, a nice play behind the bag at second. This young man is absolutely remarkable. Uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates traded him to, to get Doc Manish because they had Rennie Sennett, but he can really go. He has great lateral motion, as you'll watch here. He'll go way to the right. Now, this is a play that he learned from Bill Mazeroski right there. He sets himself, as you see, then throws. Too many young second basemen make the mistake of throwing off balance. And uh, Mazeroski, the master, taught him how to set himself and let it go. First base side, Shambliss. He's got the ball, and he steps on the bag, and that retires Rusty Staub. Jam 
Atlas didn't know he had that ball. No, he was holding that ball like a scoop of vanilla ice cream on a cone. And it's saying that Rusty Staub put the Tigers in front 2-0 in the first inning. When he hit his fourth home run of the year, a two-run shot. The Yankees pulled it within one in the second. When Elrod Hendricks drilled one out of here. Alex Johnson. One strike to him. The Tiger, D.H. Homered four times. Knocked in 29. Started tonight's ball game hitting a 280. Two strikes to Alex Johnson. I was going to kick out Alex. If he hits a ball on the infield. He grounds out. They throw him out. When he gets back to the Tiger dugout, he never takes his helmet back. And he always whips it out someplace with a bat boy after to retrieve it. Kenny Holtzman. Ball one, strike two. Holtzman is only allowed two base hits, but he trails two to one. The Yankees have four off Goodrich. Mason going to have to hurry. Throw, and he got him by a step. The Yankees retire the Tigers in order in the sixth inning. They get nothing at the end of six full innings of play. Detroit two, New York one. Practically all of the insurance needs for the family. The State Farm agent is there to service all those needs. It's, there's no need for you to keep a directory on the wall in the kitchen about who you have various insurance policies with. You know the agent. He's up the street. He's the State Farm guy. He's the good neighbor. He's right there. If you have a problem, you call him. That's what makes our system work so well. Mark Fidrich. Young right-hander leads the Yankees by a score of 2-1. to one. Here you see him doing his little ground crew job. First, a little action with the feet to loosen some dirt. Then the hand action, filling in the hole around the pitching rubber area, where he said he, he wants to have his own hole out there where he can set his foot in there and deliver off the rubber. Nothing wrong with it. He's won seven and lost one. And he leads here by a score of 2-1. to one. As we go to the top half of the seventh inning. And all set now to bring you the rest of the action. Here's Water Wolf. All right, thank you, Yuki. Nettles, Gamble, and Hendricks for the Yankees in the seventh inning. And here's Nettles, you know, not having a big average year, but with 11 home runs and 33 runs batted in. A pretty good productive year as far as power goes. And I asked him about it the other day. Well, I just... I feel the best, the best part of my season so far has been my defense. I played, I played good third base, and uh, I made some good plays for us, saved a few games, and, uh, you know, in the long run, my hitting will come around. What are the stolen bases? You've stolen more you know, stolen bases this year than the last four yeah, years. Yeah, I think I've gotten uh, six or seven stolen bases, and uh, it's just because of Billy gives me the sign. The other guys wouldn't even give me the sign or let me run. Third baseman Greg Nettles explaining the reason. For the stolen bases, finally you found a manager who gave him the go sign. Top of the seventh, two to one, Tigers. One and one to Greg Nettles. A lot of managers give me the go sign warning. <laughs> go where? Go, go and don't come back. <laughs> there you see Fidrix psyching himself up, talking to the ball. Do your thing, ball. Out of play. I'll tell you something, if Fidrix continues this success, you're going to have an awful lot of little leaguers certainly doing the same thing. Mark Fidrix. 2-2 to Nettle. One of the last time he lost, Luis Tion of Boston beat him 2-0. He's now won six in a row. He's beaten Cleveland, Milwaukee, Texas, California, Kansas City, Minnesota, and Boston. He's trying to get New York in the hot. Three and two to Nettles. Nettles popped out the second, single in the fourth. Only two hits for the Tigers, but one was a two-run homer by Rusty Staub in the first inning. You know, the one thing I wondered about Fidrich uh, in the early part of the ball game, wanted the fact that they've got this huge crowd in here tonight. I was wondering if it would bother him, but evidently, he said the Yankees didn't bother him, did they? <laughs> Three and two to Nettles. Fidrich can't get it. Garcia, no play. That'll be a base hit for Greg Nettles. 
Now watch Fedrick if he talks to Garcia here and says, nice try. Well, what happens here, of course, I think Garcia's going to have a play if he isn't interfered with. Right there is the action that stopped him from making the throw on Nettles. It would have been awfully close, but fortunately there, more than anything else, is to get the bases that neither player was injured. There you look at the second baseman, Pedro Garcia, from another angle. He almost got his head, almost got his head torn off by Fidrich. There's some outstanding camera work that time. Saw it from every angle possible. This program being brought to you as an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds now to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Two strikes to gamble, top of the seventh. Tigers lead at two to one. Nettles on first, nobody out. Fidrich against Holtzman. Thompson holding Nettles. The two-strike pitch. Easy play for the floor. And Nettles fakes the tag, goes a quarter of the way down and comes back. And a good throw by LaFleur. And the fans give LaFleur a hand just for the throw. Give you a moment here. Philadelphia now leading Montreal 6-2 to two at the end of eight innings of play. Mike Smith is in the home run as you watch LaFleur here. You're going to see the tag now by Nettles, the bluff tag. I know Greg Nettles knows a lot better to run on Ron LaFleur. He's got an outstanding throwing arm. Swing and a miss to Hendrick, who homered in the second inning. The Yankees' only run of the ball game. The Yankees have out-hit the Tigers 5-2, to two, but trail 2-1. to one. Nettles with his leadoff first. The one-strike pitch to Hendrick. Philadelphia has only lost 20 games. They're on their way to their 49th victory. This year they've beaten the Dodgers five out of seven. The Reds six out of eight. We'll be there next Monday night on ABC. Two balls and a strike to Hendricks. Elrod Jerome Hendricks from the Virgin Islands. Played most of his career with the Orioles. Mickey Stanley. Two gone for the Yankees as Nettles returns to first. Remember Stanley in his prime really was one of the fine center fielders in baseball. So there's two down. That'll bring up Randolph. Randolph 0 for 2. Flied out and grounded out. And I would say, gentlemen, if the season ended today, Willie Randolph would be your rookie of the year. I would have to go along with you. Water. You know, I tell you, I saw Randolph about three weeks ago. He was up around 330, 340. But he has taken a dive in the last two weeks. You know, the one thing that I think the Yankees aren't happy about in anything with Randolph, he's committed 10 errors. Fedrick fields his position well and throws out Randolph by 45 feet. And look at Fedrick tear off the mound, and he's the first one back in the dugout. So we go to the home seven. The Tigers two, the Yankees one. Monte Carlo by Chevrolet. Monte Carlo. It's so special, so dry. So very personal, you'll probably want to park it yourself. Hi, Max Mileage here, welcoming you to the Firestone Car Service Center, where you can count on us to help you get maximum mileage. We specialize in front-end alignment and precision wheel balancing. We replace worn-out shocks and overhaul drum and disc brakes and return the worn-out parts. Want to know more about Firestone's Max Mileage Car Service? Just check your local newspaper for this week's Firestone Max Mileage Car Service offer. Playing Major League Baseball is a lot of fun and what an opportunity. I'm Ron Fairley and I've been fortunate to be part of this dream game since 1958. With dedication, it may be within reach of you talented young people watching this game too. 
A career in baseball holds many fascinations, and this includes the opportunity to set yourself up for a very satisfying life once your playing days end. It takes perseverance and hard work, but it's well worth it for a life in baseball. Don't you agree? Preceding message on behalf of Major League Baseball. Don't forget Wide World of Sports coming up this Saturday, 5 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. U.S. Men's Olympic Gymnastics Trials from University Park, Pennsylvania. The U.S. Women's Olympic Diving Trials from Knoxville and coverage of Operation Sail. All the sailing vessels coming into New York Harbor. All right, the Tiger home seven. It'll be Thompson, Rodriguez, and Stanley, and a foul by Thompson. And, man, here's a guy, certainly uh, nobody expected Thompson to be in the major leagues and lead the Tigers in home runs as he does. 21-year-old Jason Thompson. Thompson 0 for 2 tonight, grounded out and flied out. Line drive, second one of the night, caught by Shambles. You were just talking about how young this young man is, that uh, Thompson, you know, he's the same age as Willie Randolph of the Yankees. They're both 21, and they will celebrate their 22nd birthday on the same day, July 6th, the week from tomorrow. Hmm. Talking about rookie of the year, we're talking about Randolph, I would imagine if Fidrick continues... He'd have to get a vote in there. Rodriguez tonight, 0 for 2. Best year was 1970 with the Senators. There's Rodriguez's young child. Aurelio Jr. Right field. Gamble. And home run, Rodriguez. Aurelio Rodriguez. Number five for Aurelio, and the Tigers lead it three to one. Now that right field fence is a nine-foot fence. It is not inconceivable that outfielders can reach up and grab it, which they have done. Now you'll see the fence. The wire fence on top of the concrete over Gamble's head. Home run, Rodriguez, three to one, Detroit. There's another home run on ABC without a man on board. Right you are, Bob Prince. There's Stanley. Shambliss waves Holtzman off and makes the play himself. And the fans boo. I tell you about Chris Shambliss. A veteran first baseman like Shambliss. He knows the speed of Mickey Stanley. There you see him. He waves Holtzman off right away. He knows the speed of Stanley. He got him by a step. Garcia 0 for 2, flied out in the second, grounded out in the fifth. 3 to 1, Tigers lead it in the seventh. Mason takes his time to Shambliss, and that's it for the Tigers. A one run, one hit, the home run to right field by Rodriguez to the opposite field, and after seven complete, Detroit 3, the Yankees 1. <laughs> The Alaskan Pipeline, one of the largest construction projects since the pyramids. And the men who are making it have to give it all they've got, or they don't make it. Quitting time! Come on, guys, let's go! And up here, quitting time is Miller time. Time to head for the best-tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. If you got the time, we got the beer. Once again, Wide World of Sports this Saturday, the U.S. Men's Olympic Gymnastics Trials. That'll be from University Park, Pennsylvania, home of Penn State. And then the U.S. Women's Olympic Diving Trials from Knoxville. And for all you uh, sailing enthusiasts, boy, and shipping enthusiasts, what a sight this will be. Coverage of Operation Sail. This, of course, is uh, in connection with the bicentennial. Thousands of vessels from all over the world sailing into New York Harbor. 
So that certainly will be a spectacle. This Saturday, over most of these ABC stations, 5 o'clock Eastern and Pacific, 4 o'clock Central, on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Boy, and the outstanding coverage by ABC's Wide World of Sports. Hey, I might be up there for that uh, sailing deal. You'll be on one of those vessels. I might be right? on one of the boats. They want me to go up in the crow's nest. <laughs> yes. Show hitting films up there. Well, that would be very That's interesting. That's going to be an outstanding deal, though. Yeah. I'll tell you what I'm kind of interested in, too, while we have the opportunity. I know we're going to be doing this big all-star game and everything, but I'm kind of looking ahead a little bit. In the National League, I'm wondering if the big shootout in the championship series is going to be between Philadelphia and Cincinnati. Now, if you had to wonder in your league, the American League, Bob Uecker, which two would you guys uh, well, if talk you, about? If you don't talk about the New York yeah. Yankees, yeah. you know, and I'll tell you one thing about the Oakland A's, Kansas City Royals, the Texas Rangers, but the Oakland A's, they've got Fingers back, they've got Rudy back, they've got Vida Blue back, maybe for the rest of the season. I just got a feeling that they're going to they're going to come on a little better than they are right now, Bob. They might be around there come uh, come September. Mason hits the first pitch. Garcia, easy play, 4-3 if you're scoring, and there's one down. You know, on the roof and uh, Bob Uecker, I don't think we can really, and let's get this in a hurry, say that any one team is out of the National League oh, or the no. American League. But I mean, we're just sort of speculating right now about certain shootouts. The big thing is we don't have to speculate. We're going to be covering it for ABC and baseball fans all over the world. All right, Mickey Rivers, 0 for 3 tonight, has a 20-game hitting streak on the line. This conceivably could be his last shot to increase it to 21. And Fiedrich doesn't fool around right in there, talking to that ball. Man, he works fast. He's ready to go. The one-strike pitch to Rivers. Make it two. I'll tell you, Fiedrich's working like he wants to catch a train. Two strike pitch to Rivers. Mm. I'm going to tell you, it's one of the things I was talking about earlier. You get two strikes. Look at Fidrich out there. He is indicating. He was just pointing in at Rivers on the inside corner where he wanted that pitch to be. They came with two good sinking fastball strikes and not afraid to come inside to Rivers with that hard slider. He hit him on the fist. Two strikes to Rivers. I'll tell you, the fans really getting a kick and reacting. To Fidrix, over 50,000 fans here in Tiger Stadium on a Monday night. The Tigers going in only two games out of second. Verizon, two down, 6-3 if you're scoring. And that could be the hitting streak for Mickey Rivers unless the Yankees come back and at least tie this ball game. You know, Warner, we talked earlier about Fidrick. He's heating up around 93 miles an hour, 92 miles an hour early in the ballgame. He is at 93 right now. We're in the eighth inning. Still bringing it on. Roy White, one for three, takes a ball, double in the third, grounded out in the first, <laughs> flat out in the sixth. I get a kick out of this guy. He's probably saying, oh. come on, move that ball, move that ball. <laughs> Two balls to Roy White. You know, both of the big hitting streaks, 30 by LaFleur, stopped by opposing uh, team pitchers. Now he's trying to hear right here if he has stopped them. The pitchers involved in this game tonight working on the streak of Rivers. And White swings at the two ball, no count, base hit. White will try for second, stop throw. He is in there. And Garcia says, come on, give me a break. Well, we're going to get a look here, Bob Euchard. Nick Bremigan was right in a good spot to make the call, the second base umpire. I'll tell you the surprise here, that White, the Yanks down by two, tries to make it to second. They need base runners. I'll tell you, Warner, here's the slide. Now, here's a good hook slide by Roy White. Safe. And Garcia's tag is late. I want to tell you, and Billy Martin told us this earlier today, he said, any time I get a chance to run or take an extra base, I'm going to try and make somebody make a mistake against me. And I think Roy White has got good speed. He knew the throwing arm of Rusty Staub, too. Rusty Staub had to make a complete turn and throw that ball from right field. Carlos May, one for three tonight, single in the first, grounded out in the third and the sixth inning. Two outs. Tigers lead by two. Rule and Lamanchik warming up in the Tiger bullpen. Keep in mind, Fidrich has seven complete games this year. 1-1 one, one to May. Easy play for Garcia, and that's it for the Yankees. So, 
as the Tigers come to bat. And look at Fidrich charge off that mound. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The Tigers three. The Yankees one. Gillette has a new razor, hon. A new razor called Good News. You never have to change the blades. That's nice, dear. You never have to change the blades. It's disposable. How's it shave? Fantastic. It's twin blades. That's a great shave. What happens when the blades get dull? Yeah, for lots of great shaves, you throw the whole thing away. What's it cost? Only a quarter. What's it called? Good News. The Good News Disposable Razor. With shaves like these at a price like this, you can't afford not to try Good News. Harry, are they going to stay for lunch? I won't get dressed without my right guard. I will not get dressed without my right guard. Why not? Because right guard double protection protects us so well, it also helps protect our clothes from odor, wetness, and stains. Protects us, protects our clothes. I will not get dressed without my right guard. Get dressed, David. Oh, thank you. Right guard double protection antiperspirant. Spray and roll on. Don't get dressed without it. As we see Ralph Pout reminding Ralph that this game is telecast under television rights granted by Major League Baseball solely for the entertainment and beauty audience and any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the explicit written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited. Ralph Prince, what's the scoreboard situation? Well, very quickly, uh, Boston out on top of Baltimore, 10 8 at the end of seven. Uh, Duncan and Gritch and Hobson and Homer. Uh, we'll get some other scores in a moment. All right, for the Tigers in the home eight, Kim LaFleur and Verizon. Kim tonight, 0 for 2. Did reach a board on the error by Willie Randolph. 25 year old Bruce Kim. Sounds like a kung fu artist. Nettles throws out Kim, and there's one down. Well, there happens to be a man in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who's been one of the great kung fu men, and his name is Mr. Kim. <laughs> it's funny that you'd bring that up. Now, uh, and of note, uh, Philadelphia whack at Montreal 6-2, and Schmidt has hit the big home run there. Carlton is winning his seven. LaFleur tries to punt his way on. LaFleur, one for two tonight, walked in the first, singled in the third, stole second, and struck out in the fifth. You know, Ken Holtzman trailing by a score of three to one here in the eighth inning. He's only allowed three base hits. The Yankees have six off Kidrich, but he has really been tough with men on base. Right field, base hit for LaFleur. Gamble faced the throw to first. Making the throw behind LaFleur and throws it into second. So LaFleur tonight, two for three. Watch Gamble. Yankee right fielder Oscar Gamble. Put it in your pocket, Oscar. <laughs> Here's Verizer, 0 oh for three. Grounded out twice, wide out. Holtzman, good pickoff move. Or I want to point out something, though, on Ken Holtzman. If Ken Holtzman looks toward the plate, he's not going to throw home. He's going to go to first base. There goes LaFleur. The throw. He's going to be safe. So make that 25 stolen bases. He's got two in this game. Look at the jump on LaFleur. Look where he was when Elrod Hendricks let go of that throw. No chance at all. Look at the jump. Ron LaFleur, camera angles all over. We got him covered. LaFleur at second, one out. Right field, Campbell toward the line. Can't get a base hit. LaFleur around his third. They hold him up. Throws it away, but it will be backed up. And down to second goes Verizon. I think they'll score that a base hit and an error. So the Tigers with runners at second and third. And the question now is, gentlemen, even though it's lefty versus lefty, would you put on Rusty Star? There you look at Ron LaFleur now. When he finally sees the ball, isn't going to be caught. You're going to see Joe Schultz coming into your picture here, holding Ron LaFleur. Well, you didn't see him, but Schultz held him. And wisely so, I believe, although the throw got away from Shambliss. With a guy like Rusty Staub coming up and only one man out, 
Why well, take a chance on the floor getting thrown out at the plate? Tigers leading 3-1. to one. You realize, gentlemen, as the Yankee infield plays in, this is the first inning we've had more than one hit in this ball game. The riser at second, LaFleur at third, one out, stalled the batter. And nice play by Randolph, has only one play as LaFleur scores. So good stalled in RBI, his third of the night, and the Tigers lead 4-1. They ruled uh, that Barraza took second on the throw and no error there. So uh, I guess their basis of the ruling was that uh, the throw was made so poorly that he was going to be able to go in there, but no other advance was made. Had the man from third with Florking, and they would have ruled error. Barraza moved to third on the ground out. Two outs, four to one. Tigers lead. Alex Johnson, the batter. Fair ball, and it's caught. Johnson on his way to second. The throw to second. Too late. Johnson's in with a double. Five to one, Tiger. And look at this crowd. And I'll tell you one thing. Billy Martin is not going to waste his bullpen here. It's the eighth inning. And it's not giving up on the ball game. But unless he absolutely has to, Holtzman's going to have to go to the full eight right here. Can you imagine the hand that young Mark Bidrich is going to receive when he takes the mound in the top of the ninth inning? Nothing, perhaps, to the hand he's going to receive if he wins this ball game. All right, two outs, Johnson at second. The Tigers with two runs here in the bottom of the eighth lead it five to one. Here's Thompson, 0 for 3. The Tigers leading home run hitter. We have another pretty good battle going now. Brett batting 363, and LaFleur is up about 351 for the American League batting title. They're fighting it out. How long do you think it'll be before Rod Carew's in there? Somewhere along the line, he might be heard from. 1-1 <laughs> to Thompson. The official paid attendance tonight, 47,855, 47,855. Low, ball three to Thompson. Holtzman has walked only one batter, and that was LaFleur to lead off the ball game. You give Thompson the hit sign here? Definitely. He's got it. Randolph to Shambliss. That's it for the Tigers, but they score two runs on three hits. No errors and one left. We go to the ninth. The Tigers lead it 5-1. to one. This is ABC. Well, there's your all-star battling. Uh, Georgie, Brett, Freddie Patek, Gritch, Carew, Chris, Lynn, and LaFleur. Now, battling Gritch, of course, is uh, the young man here at second base, Willie Randolph. But that's going to be a very, very big event on the bicentennial year at Bedford Stadium in Philadelphia, where we'll be, all of us, to bring you right here on ABC, the all-star. We hope that you'll continue uh, battling and send them in. Here's your National League looking now. A lot of Cincinnati players in there. That's practically Cincinnati and Philadelphia with Steve Garvey nudging in. And, of course, Dave Sky King Kingman of the New York Mets. So that's going to be a great all-star game. We hope you'll keep battling and come out along with it. All right, here we go to the top of the ninth inning. Young Mark Fidrich with a 5-1 to one lead. Shooting for his eighth win of the year and his eighth complete game. The Yankees have won five in a row coming in. The Yankees. Tigers were only two games out of second place going in. All right, Fidrix blowing, huffing, puffing. And he gets the first one across to Shambliss. Shambliss, Nettles, and Gamble in the Yankee ninth. Make it two. Shambliss 0 for 3 tonight. 
Sun Man wins tonight, Water. He may well have the best winning percentage in base. He's got it. And the fans are standing for Fidrick. He may be your starting all-star pitcher for the American League. Here's Nettles. Nettles has solved Fidrich two for three, single in the fourth, single in the seventh. I wouldn't want to be Daryl Johnson of the Red Sox and not select this young man to be on his staff, I'll tell you that. Garcia, two down in the ninth. And look at Fidrich, he's talking, he's walking around. this young man nice play Pedro that's just what he said right there nice play Pedro I love this guy here's Campbell 0 for 3 oh, oh I bet you he threw that ball over 95 miles an hour look at it he's not, you talk about Jim Cox being a fast worker he's not letting these guys get set the one strike pitch to Campbell. You know, that was his first bad pitch of the night. Little change up that time for Mark Fidrick. Boy, this guy's higher than a kite. Fidrick has not walked the batter. Look at him. Talking to that ball. Right field, well hit. The floor falls down. It's off the wall. And Gamble stumbles and comes back to first. Gamble maybe missed the bag. The floor is down. He hit that pipe out there. That's exactly what he did, Bob Prince. Oh he hit my. that pipe at the 370 mark out there. His feet gave away from under him. He is getting to his feet up. I'm going to tell you something about Ron LaFleur. This is one of the toughest guys you can ever see. As you look at it now, and you'll see his feet come out from under him, he had a chance to catch this ball. There you see him. The ball hit at the bottom of the wall. I'll tell you what he slipped on, where the grass touches the warning track. And meanwhile, Gamble missed first base and had to come back. An easy two-base hit otherwise. Well, of course, in this situation, that isn't going to help him anyhow, as you know, Warner. Right. And Ralph Hawks going to check on here. And uh, LaFleur saying, I'm going to stay in. He's not going to get out of there. And I really believe if we watch that, uh, if we watch that, wouldn't, uh, there's no question that he's going to catch that ball. It was a catchable ball until he fell down. Listen, while we've got this pause here, uh, speaking of that all-star game, uh, I've got to mention two things. Number one, certainly Johnny Bench has been one of the greatest players in the last eight years. And there's the hand for LaFleur. But, you know, here Bob Boone of the Phillies, is out hitting bench by over 40 points, four RBIs, and certainly, in my opinion, Boone should be the starting catcher in the National League. And the same thing in the American League, as great as Carlton Fisk has been, the All-Star game is supposed to be this season. What a player has done from April to July. And Thurman Munson, offensively, has played better than Carlton Fisk. i got to tell you, I've seen a lot of ball games play, and I've caught a few. I don't think I've ever seen a pitcher this keyed up in the ninth inning of a ball game or all through the ball game. You'd think this guy'd be running out of gas by an hour, starting to get down a little bit, but he is just starting to heat it up. What's getting me is he's giving me duck bumps, and I watch over 8,000 ball games. The fans are cheering. Let's go, Mark. Here's Hendricks. Two outs. A ball to Hendricks. Gamble at first. The Tigers lead 5-1. And here comes Fidrich off the mound. <laughs> He's saying, settle down, Paul. <laughs> Listen to the fans. Let's go, Mark. All right, here, settle down. Settle down. Give me that ball. Two balls inside ball three. And Fidrich, who has not walked the batter, you know, Warner, you look at him now. We've said he's been keyed up all night, but he might he might be getting a little too high right now. He, well, he's in there with that fastball. He's only walked 18 batters going into tonight's ballgame, so he has excellent location. Nobody.
body holding gamble, of course. The three and one to Hendricks. Hey, it's good man. And now, the three two to Hendricks. The fans ready to explode. Here's your pitch. Ground ball should be the ball game. It's over. And the Tigers act like Goodrich has just won the seventh game of the World Series. He has. <laughs> He's won seven in a row. He is some kind of unbelievable young Mark Fidrich. So Mark Fidrich thanking his teammates. Look at that. He's thanking his teammates. He's thanking the umpires, everybody, the ground crew. And the fans want him to come back. The fans are calling for him to come back. So Mark Fidrich. Possibly the all-star pitcher with a record of eight and one. Eight complete games stops the Yankees winning streak at five. The fans are not going to stop until Fidrich comes back out. They want him to come out and tip his hat. He don't know where he's going. <laughs> Listen to him. We want Mark. He's got to come back. Come on, Mark. Nobody has left the ballpark. This place is jammed up full. I cannot believe it. I'll tell you this. The Tigers better promote five days in advance every time Fidrich is going to pitch because that's an extra 30,000 fans in the ballpark. The clubhouse attendant just ran into the dugout to have Fidrich come back. And if he comes back, you'll hear it. You know, Warner, he's beaten Cleveland, Milwaukee, Texas, California, Kansas City, Minnesota, Boston, New York now becomes the eighth ball club he has beaten. He's won seven in a row. The last game he lost, Boston beat him behind Luis Piant, two to nothing back on the 25th of May. They've got to be in love with this young man, no question about it. I'll tell you, he has won this town. 21-year-old Mark Fidrich from Worcester, Mass. And here he comes, here he comes! Oh, this is he loves him. <laughs> Look at that. Shaking the policeman's hand. Look at that. This kid is terrific. I, in my life, I've been in baseball 35 years. I have never in my life ever seen anything to equal this. The closest was when Dale Long hit a home run. Why wouldn't he cry? He's Look so happy. He's Look at this. You can Warner. go on down to try to get an interview lined up, and we'll hold it up here, Warner. We can go over some other scores, but the only other thing I've ever seen approaching this was when Dale Long hit a home run off uh, Carl Erskine of the Dodgers, and they brought him out. It was the seventh or eighth home run that, uh, in a row, and the people are still standing here, but never have I seen a ball player brought back out like this. They win it by a score of 5-1. to one. We'll be back out here. about Firestone, Firestone, Firestone. Well, I think the Firestone radio tires are the best tires they ever made. A friend might not know that Firestone's long mileage steel belted radio 500 is built by craftsmen, piece by piece, one at a time. But when it comes to how Firestone tires work, just ask a friend. Now, if you can't get a Firestone, I'll park it. Firestone. What does it take to make a car both elegant and affordable? A car must be rich looking to the eye, yet solid, stable, responsive. Chevrolet Concourse. Of course. Fine touring automobiles have a sophistication, a feeling of quality the driver both expects and admires. Concourse, of course. But a car still needs a Chevrolet price. Concourse is priced under $4,000. Concourse, of course. Concourse, of course. What you're about to see are the kinds of people who own America's oil companies. Over two million Americans invest in America's major oil companies. Over half of them women. Almost half are retired. Colleges invest and universities. Another 12 million invest through programs that invest for them, like mutual funds. 
Who owns America's oil companies? Over 14 million Americans who put their trust in companies like Texaco. We're working to keep that trust. All right, Bob Euchre has gone down trying to uh, really fight his way through the 50,000 crowd. We're trying to get Mark Fidrich, the young right-hander who has just won this ball game, and he has won the town of Detroit. So let's just tell you that ABC's Monday Night Baseball was brought to you by Chevrolet. Like baseball, hot dogs, and apple pie, Chevrolet is an American favorite. Drive a Chevy in Belize by Gillette, makers of good, thick, rich, foamy shave cream. And by Firestone, the radial tire people, makers of the steel-belted Radio 500. Travel arrangements made through in a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United featuring Royal Hawaiian Service on more wide-body 747s to Hawaii than any other airline. Now, once again, waiting for Bob Euchre to bring out Mark Fiedrich. And Bob Prince, you saw Dizzy Dean pitch. Can you make any comparison, not as far as talent, because obviously it's too early in Fiedrich's career, but what about as far as his characteristics, eccentric-wise, being a character? Any similarities, characteristics? Can you make a comparison? Well, I watched Dizzy. Dizzy was a very flamboyant individual, did a lot of things in baseball off the field as well as on. But when he got out on the mound, Dizzy was a, a very take-charge type of guy and pitcher in that old gas house gang, the tradition of baseball with the Cardinals in the 30s. Never in my life have I ever seen anything like this young man saying to the ball, I want you to go this way, or I want you to sink, or now, hey, don't throw that ball up there again, and he talks to the ball, and... Never in my life have I ever seen it, and I guess he is such a refreshingly beautiful young man that people here not only appreciate his talent, but they don't even resent it. Even the opposing ball players don't resent it. You know, normally you'd think they'd say you're a showboat or hot, dog. A, a hot dog or whatever. They don't seem to do that at all. I'm just, uh, I just, uh, I've never seen anything like it. You know, again, as we watch Fidrich here, the key, as you say, is that he wins. He's successful. He's eight and one, so he can get away with it. If the same guy who was one and eight tried to do it, they'd probably boo him out of here. But there you see it, the bird, Mark Fidrich, winning his eighth game and eighth complete game of the year. Other scores tonight, Boston leads Baltimore 11 to eight in the ninth inning. Everybody and his brother has pitched in that game. Duncan and Gritch have homered for the birds and Hobson for Boston. Milwaukee and Cleveland, the Indians beat Milwaukee, as you see the uh, Kansas City, Minnesota game, not to confuse you, 2 2 in the fourth inning. That's Leonard against Singer. Oakland and Texas scoreless now in the sixth inning. Norris against uh, Umbarger. And I'm wondering when is Vita Blue going to play? Cleveland has beaten Milwaukee 5 3, and it's a good thing they did because the Tigers won tonight. And the Tigers could have moved within one game of second. But uh, as you see, the Tigers won, and uh, also Cleveland winning, and Boston leading Baltimore now 12. Eight. I think Boston can make a run right there. Now this Philadelphia ball club is red hot. They've won six and lost two. They've only lost 20 ball games on the season. They are up with a remarkable record of uh, uh, victories on the road and everything else. They are challenging a long time record. Here you see Pittsburgh beating uh, Chicago 4-2 in the fifth inning. And uh, the New York Mets with Sky King Kingman belted one out there on top of the Cardinals 4-3 in the seventh. Other National League action, seeing San Diego in the first inning, leading the Reds 3 to nothing, And uh, they've got a great pitcher out there, Randy Jones. The final this afternoon, the Houston Astros unloaded on the red-hot San Francisco Giants and beat them by a score of 8-2. to two. Nice to see old Willie McCovey hitting a home run for uh, San Diego in the first inning with two on. Yes, it stretch. is. There's a part of us playing with great pain and uh, what have you. We're still waiting for... Uh, our partner, Bob Euchre, I know one of the things, is he's going to get Friedrich, I'm sure of that. Secondly, though, I think he belongs to the people of Detroit. You can bet they're all down there interviewing him, and he might have even made Ernie Harwell's post-game show. You suppose he might have been on that? <laughs> you huh? think he might be the star of the game? He's <laughs> got a pretty gosh darn good chance. Well, I'll tell you, in case you missed it, uh, Friedrich was the story. The Tigers jumped out on top in the first inning, a two-run homer by Rusty Staub. And uh, that's the way it was for a while until Ellie Hendricks came back with a home run in the second inning, and it was 2-1. to one. And that's the way it stood until Ellie, uh, Aurelio Rodriguez hit one of the opposite field, the right field, to make it 3-1. to one. And meanwhile, Fidrich was mowing down the Yankees right and left. He uh, breezed through the uh, fifth inning, sixth inning, gave up a single to Nettles in the seventh, and a double to White in the eighth. And then the Tigers broke it open with two in the bottom of the eighth, if you can call two runs breaking it open. But I think in this type of ball game, it did break it open. 
because instead of three to one, it made it five to one. And then Fiedrich just cut him down in the ninth inning, except for the single by Gamble. And uh, fortunately, Ron LaFleur is okay. He tripped where the, uh, the uh, grass connects with the warning track and couldn't catch up with the ball. And I think, Bob Prince, you're right. LaFleur would have caught that ball. So that's the way it ends. Uh, Fiedrich allows seven hits, but the key here, he did not walk a batter. And this youngster has control. He's walked an average of only one batter for every two ball games. He doesn't strike out a lot of people, but uh, he wins the game. And now Bob Uecker in the Tiger dugout with winning pitcher Mark Fidrich. Bob? The pitching sensation of the American League is with us tonight. Mark, I've never seen anything like this in my life tonight, and I know it's a very emotional moment for you. Hell yeah. I mean, 48,000 people coming out to see Detroit pitch. I said we couldn't have gave him a better show, you know? Were you ever worried about the Yankees tonight? I know we talked to you earlier. You said, uh, well, you weren't worried about the Yankee ball. It doesn't look like you ever worried about anybody. Well, I don't know. Everything's just new to me. So I used to come out as hard as I could come out at people. And then I have the Z. Those guys are doing two-thirds of the work, and I'm only doing a third by pitching, you know? They got me to run and all that other stuff, and the people come out and draw it and get my drill and so on. What can I ask? I couldn't ask for no much more. You know, in the ninth inning, in the ninth inning of the ball game, Mark, you're so sky high in the ninth inning of the ball game through the early part of the ball game. These tough left-handed hitters with New York, a very short porch here in right field in Detroit, but yet you came inside. You kept pitching inside on the Yankees. Well, I don't know. I mean, it was just it was working, so you just keep on coming when it works. And like that one guy that left, he burned me. I came outside on him, and he pulled the thing way out there, you know? And then that was the only hit he got off me after that, but... Damn, that was great. You know, I couldn't ask for anything more. I don't know. I was thought. <laughs> you know, Bruce Kim. Bruce Kim has done a lot of catching for you, Mark. Is there a is there a thing going now with you and Bruce Kim? Is is he going to be your man now every time you start? Uh, I couldn't answer that question. All I can say is, when you're hot with someone, you know, you keep that you know thing going, right? So him and I are hot. So why not you know keep it going like that? I don't know. I know I I'm confident pitching against the Bill and John too. You know, so that. That doesn't come into my mind because he's the only catcher I'm ever going to have. No. You know, everyone's caught me before. So, what the heck? What's nice? You know, when we, when we watch you, uh, when we watch you, Mark, when we watch you, watch you tonight, patting the mound, talking to the ball that looks like, or talking about location, is that what you're doing out there? Well, when I pat the mound, I'm just keeping it so I don't, you know, get in that guy's well. I want to dig my own hole and my own landing point and all that. I have my own thing, and then I'm just getting myself psyched, telling them, don't let up. Uh, just throw it as high as you can, as high as you can. And if they burn you, they burn you. That's, you know, life. But I got luck I lucked out tonight, and I had the great D behind me in the run, too. I tell you, you didn't luck out tonight. You were outstanding all night long. You threw the ball. We had your clock tonight. You're throwing the ball 93 miles an hour in the ninth inning, just about the same you were in the early part of the ball game. Well, <laughs> life, I guess. I don't know how to answer that. i never had a time before in my life. That's the first time anyone's ever timed the ball. What about what about when you're talking out there, Mark, all the time? When you're maybe you miss with a pitch and now you start talking. Are you talking about location? I'm saying like, well, I stood up on that pitch. I dropped my elbow. I did this. I did that because I can feel when I let the ball go. I can feel. I know it's going to come up, go. You know where it's going to go. I, you know, I can feel if I drop my arm and do all that stuff. So I'm telling myself now, just flow and keep it normal like you're supposed to do, and think where you're going to throw that pitch. That's all I want to do. You know. You know, you found a home here in Detroit. You got these fans here tonight. They have been outstanding. You know, I've never, I've never seen a ball game like this, Mark. You know, in the ninth inning of this ball game tonight, nobody had left this ballpark. That's because we were winning. <laughs> you know, I mean, these guys are doing well. You know, I just, you know, I, I, I love it. I got to ask you one thing. Have you ever, have you ever heard a more emotional response from a crowd than we had here tonight? Well, I never played under this many people before in my life. In the minus, you get, you know, 2,000. But that 2,000 is cheering hard, too, you know? It makes it sound like 2,000. But when you get the house packed, you, we, we want to do good, and we did. We, we respond to the crowd, you know what I mean? You said, you said you did this in the minor leagues, too, Mark. I mean, this isn't just a thing that, that has started now in the major leagues. You did it all the time, didn't you? Yes, I did. I've, I've done this ever since I've been pitching. Keep my mind in the game. Cut. <laughs> all right, that's our man, Mark Fedrich, tonight. We'll be back with more right after this. Bob, once again, the final score behind young Mark Fidrich, the Tigers stopping the Yankees' five-game winning streak and Mickey Rivers' 20-game hitting streak. Tigers five, the Yankees one. Next Monday night, 
will be in Philadelphia for the Phillies-Dodgers game, which will be seen everywhere in the United States except in the Philadelphia area, which will see the Astros-Mets game. For Bob Prince and Bob Euchre, this is Warner Wolf. ABC's Monday Night Baseball has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Recognized around the world. Everywhere in the United States except in the Philadelphia area, which will see the Astros-Mets game. For Bob Prince and Bob Euchre, this is Warner Wolf. ABC's Monday Night Baseball has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Warner Wolf back with Bob Prince and Bob Euchre still down on the field where Mark Fridrich has beaten the New York Yankees 5-1. to one. And uh, Bob Euchre is down on the field and I think he has some fan reaction to the fine performance of Mark Fridrich. Bob, this is Debbie Wykowski we're talking to right here. And uh, tell me what about your reactions to Mark Fridrich? Not only yourself, but all these people that stayed in the ballpark tonight. I mean, what can you say? When did, you, when did you start liking him? I mean, is this a thing that's just come on now no. in the last couple of weeks or what? Ever since I got to shake his hand, I mean, what can you say when you shake his hand and you get to meet him? You love him. He's a great pitcher. What else can you do? You love him. You know, he, it, it, looks like, uh, it looks like Mark Fidrich doesn't only have a good thing going with the young people. It's the old people alike. Every everybody. baseball fan here in Detroit. Everybody. It's everybody, not just the young. Everybody. Everybody loves them. When right? When everybody welcome. <laughs> when are we going to start? All right. All right, we're going to send it back upstairs in a couple of minutes now to Warner Wolf. And that's a Mark Fidrich yeah, fan right here. <laughs> All right, thank you, Bob. Why couldn't you get an excited fan? You know, the Olympics, of course, coming up in Montreal on Saturday, July 17th, right here on ABC. And everybody, of course, uh, waiting, anticipation. So let's take a look at it. Those Olympics will kick off on Saturday, July the 17th here on ABC. Bob, let's take a look at that scoreboard. Again. All right, in the American League, Kansas City, Minnesota are still tied up at 2-2. Very big game for Kansas City because they're chasing right in there with Texas. That's the American League in there. Uh, Texas and Oakland in the eighth inning scoreless, and that's a big game. No word yet whether by the Blues working. I suppose by now, of course, that Rudy is in that lineup. 
And uh, Milwaukee Cleveland. The final Cleveland hangs tough, but they have beaten Milwaukee five to three, and that's a team that'll be very difficult to discourage. Boston's Red Sox on top of Baltimore. That's the final by the score of twelve to eight. I'll tell you what that means, Bob. The uh, Tigers are now only a half a game behind Baltimore, and still two games behind Cleveland. Right now, here are the Philadelphia Phillies. They've won uh, another one. They're six to two over Montreal. They have the best road record going you ever looked at, 23 and seven, which is sensational. And we'll be back with more scores in a moment as we see uh, here in the sixth inning, Pittsburgh beating Chicago four to two. And now let's go down on the field and talk again with Bob Uecker. Well, we've got another Mark Fidrich fan down here. Not only a Mark Fidrich fan, a Detroit Tiger fan. This is Dennis Adolphus, and this is Tony right here. And talking with Dennis, I said, I asked Dennis, I said, how many games do you come? Is this the first time you've ever seen Mark Fidrich pitch? No, this ain't my first time, man. This is, this, I've been seeing every game he pitched here so far, and, man, it's been good. How, how long have you been coming to Tiger games here, Dennis? Man, ever since 1968 when the Tigers won the pennant, man. I ain't going to never forget it. You know, I thought St. Louis was going to beat them, but... Tigers came on. Now they got, I think they got another pitcher like Jimmy McClain. And you can see his, his performance tonight, man. You know, he was good. Yeah, but this guy creates a lot more excitement than Denny McLean, doesn't he? This guy, uh, I never saw people stay in a ballpark like they did the night for Mark Fidrich, along with yourself. No, man, I ain't kidding. Talk to himself on the mile. You play on the mile, man, he's good, man. I don't know. You know, you can see everybody out there and say he's good. I know he's good, you know. That's all I can say, man. You know, he's real good. Tony, can you, uh, can you talk? Do you know Mark Fidrich? Mark, yeah. yeah, he knows Mark Fidget. Did you like his, Did you like the game tonight? Did you have fun out here tonight? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Did your dad buy you a hot dog? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go back upstairs to Warner Wolf and Bob Prince. All right, Bob, just tell that kid not to ad lib anymore. <laughs> <laughs> nice family down on the field, and I'll tell you. Bob Prince, uh, Fidrick certainly brings out the family, and like you pointed out, old people and young people. And this guy is just great for baseball. He certainly is. Now here's San Diego making a big run out in the West, and they're beating uh, Cincinnati three to nothing. That's the first inning score there. The big story out there, of course, is Randy Jones, and another big story. And the surprise is that. Pete Bavese is going to leave that ball club and go to Toronto as a general manager when they expand. That's the National League situation there. And our last score, Houston beat San Francisco 8-2 in an afternoon ball game. Well, you know, uh, Mickey Rivers had his 20-game hitting streak stopped. Earlier, Ron LaFleur had hit in 30 straight games this year. Roland Office had hit in 29 straight ball games. LaFleur went 2-3 uh, for three tonight and now has an 11-game hitting streak. But, of course, if you're going to say hitting streak, there's only one guy, and that, of course is Joe DiMaggio, 56-game hitting streak, and most baseball people will agree, if there's any one record that will never be broken, that is it, 56-game hitting streak in 1941. And uh, also, of course, I guess when you mention DiMaggio, a lot of people think of the Al Gianfrido catch in the 47 series. And, uh, of course, the interesting thing was, this was Gianfrido's last Major League ball game. Remember he got into that ball game? And the pitcher was Joe Hatton, by the way. 1947 World Series. And one of the few times DiMaggio, there's John Frito's catch. DiMaggio showed displeasure. Watch, he'll kick the dirt. Normally uh, a very poker-faced gentleman, but he actually reacted. Joe DiMaggio, 1947. Guess you saw him play a lot, huh, Bob? Well, it would have been a home run if uh, Jean Frito hadn't been playing him so very deep. Uh, I think Joe asked him that question. You know, incidentally, the other day at Yankee Stadium, I was with Lefty Gomez, who roomed with DiMaggio right. for six years, and he told me an amazing thing about that 56-game hitting streak. First off, Lefty Gomez presented a uh, called the Gomez Plate to Floyd Bannister, selected this year as the outstanding collegiate baseball player, a great left-hander from Arizona State, drafted by Houston. But he said... Gomez said about the 56 game streak one of the reasons why it may never be broken is that there were at least five or six times when DiMaggio needed a base hit going into the ninth inning and the Yankees rallied to get as many as four or five more runners to the plate in order to give him one more shot you have to put all those things together to allow for that 56 game streak and then as you recall Kenny Keltner and Smith uh, stopped him on sensational right. fielding plays in Cleveland, and then he went on to hit, I think, what, about 20-some-odd more? 16 straight yeah. games after they stopped him, so it was 72 yeah. out of 73 yeah. balls. I have to think, like you, my friend, that there's no way in the world that that one will ever be broken. Now, Bob Uecker's down on the field with some more fans. Let's go down there and uh, listen in. Yeah, we got a couple of more guys down here that we're going to talk to tonight. This is, a, this is a set of twins, Keith and, uh, and Chris Howe, and 
I know you guys are Fiedrich fans. I know that. And I know you're Tiger fans, too. You know what I want to ask you? Do you guys play Little League Baseball? Do you play baseball? Would you pattern yourself after uh, Mark Fiedrich, his style? Yeah. Uh -huh. You mean you'd go out there and do all that dirt kicking and patting the mound and uh, talking to the baseball? Sure. How about you? As long as it works. <laughs> I think Mark Fiedrich says the same thing, too. As long as it works, he's going to keep doing it. What do you like What do you like about Mark Fiedrich, you first? Well, I like his style, and I just like the way he pitches. He doesn't keep you out here at the ballpark too long, does he? He wants to get it over and get back in the clubhouse. Yeah. He's real nervous. <laughs> Are you nervous, too? Um, a little. <laughs> what about you? What do you like about Mark Fedrick? I like, what, like when he gets on the mound, he don't, he don't take no time. He just rushes right into the pitch and gets him out right away. That's how that's about it. Okay, you guys. Thanks for stopping by. And now let's go back upstairs to Warner and Bob Prince. All right, Robert, don't forget, next week in Philadelphia, the Phillies and the Dodgers, which will be seen everywhere except in Philadelphia, which will see the Astros-Mets game. Once again, the Tigers beat the Yankees 5-1 to one tonight here at 50,000 almost in Tiger Stadium. For Bob Prince and Bob Euchre, this is Warner Wolf, and have a good night. This is ABC.